at uh, 636. Please rise for the 631. Please uh, rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of, of the United States, States of America, America and to, to the republic for which it stands, stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Roll call, please, whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary. Oh, first, let me do the fire evacuation announcement. Fire evacuation, everybody. I think everybody knows the right straight out behind you or down these doors to my left and then out through the back, please. Thank you. Roll call, Mr. Secretary, whenever you're ready. Yes. Uh, Lou Fiore. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. John Petrono is here. Francis Alimo. Here. Kiran Majmudar. Here. Kenneth Holinsky. Here. Vinny Garillo is absent. Uh, Christian D'Antonio. Here. And Nicholas Lefakis is absent. He'll be absent, absent. Yep. Thank you. Make a motion to approve the minutes of Thursday, January 26th. So moved. Motion made by Vice Chairman okay. Higley, seconded by Vice Chairman DeGray to approve the minutes of Thursday, January 26th. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes? Let the record show that there was um, seven in favor and two abstentions, Mr. Alimo and Mr. Holinsky, because they were not at that meeting. The, that. the rest of us did. The rest of us did approve. <laughs> oh no, absent. Absent. Yeah, that's why I, I see my name. I'm sorry, just for clarification. Uh, seven approved. I, I saw everybody's yeah, yeah, hand go up. Seven approved, and two yeah. abstained. The abstains were Commissioner Alimo and Commissioner Holinsky because they were absent for that meeting. Is there any public communications for the Aquifer Protection Agency tonight? Any public ed communications? Any public communications? Seeing them, close public communications. Is there any correspondence in front of the Aquifer Protection? Seeing none from staff. Move on to new business. Mr. Secretary, whenever you're ready to read yeah. the uh, ARA 25. Yes, um, yes. Uh, ARA number 25-301, otherwise known as 307 Hazard Avenue, Aquifer Registration Renewal over the A45, A80 Aquifer for the Gulf Gas Station, Sarah Ludsmore of Sam's Food Stores, Applicant, Toronto Realty Corp, Owners, Map, <clears throat> excuse me, 83, Lot 85, HV 33 Zone. Thank you. Is the applicant and a representative here tonight? Yes, sir. Please. <clears throat> uh, yes, good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Moore. We want to make, we want to make sure the mic is sure. on. Yeah, and just address the mic. Thank you. Hello? Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, my name is Richard Morgan for the applicant Sam's Food Stores. I'm the in house counsel. Um, I'm here on behalf of CCO uh, Sam's Food Stores for our application for the uh, under the APA for the portion of the property that, that we lease. Um, with me is uh, Frank Troiano, the uh, owner of the entire property. Um, so he could, if there's any questions on the unleased portion, Frank would be the person to, to ask on that. But if there's anything under the Sam's Food Store's leased portion, um, I'm pleased to uh, address anything. Thank you. Does so staff have anything they want to add? I know Georgie's not here tonight, but is there anything you want to add? Um, I, are you not going to? Are you going to give a presentation on aquifer? No, no. We, um, I would let the, the our our best management practice and materials management plan that we submitted uh, to Miss Driver uh, several weeks ago to uh, stand stand on its own. Okay, I think we all got a copy of that. I believe. Mm -hmm. Is there any questions for the applicant? You saw the uh, two conditions that were part of our resolution? Okay. I, I did, and um, Frank can probably speak uh, best to timeline for the catch basin and for the removal of the uh, abandoned UST in the rear of the property. Thank you. Hi, uh, Frank Triano from Triano Realty Corporation. Um, address two? No, we don't need that for aquifer. Fort, 1408 Enfield Street, I don't know. Do you do that too? Address for myself? No. Yeah, you should. 1408 yeah, Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut. Thank you. Um, I'm a representative. I'm one of the many owners of Triano Realty. Um, 
we've had a wonderful relationship with Sam's Food Stores, with CCO. Um, they've been a tenant for a long time. Our, our family operated the car wash that is no longer active on that property right now. The UST used to be for heating oil. It has been abandoned, but it was also drained prior to be moving over to that location. Um, we should have that off the property. Uh, I, we did get an email from, um, from Georgie to make sure that that's off the property and the catch basin to be cleaned out, which we did. Uh, we also notified the tenant just some of that cleaning up in that back area. Uh, the organic growth is actually ours, but just to have that understood that um, some of the trash that's been built up in there is going to be make sure it's been policed better than it is right now. Other than that, the catch basin's already been cleaned out, and we're going to take that organic growth around it to make sure it has proper flow. Um, and we did check the oil tank, so there is no issue on that, even though it's drained. It's not empty because it was a problem. It's empty because it was re relocated to that location. Uh, originally, it was in the driveway, and they didn't want to leave it there for a safety issue. Um, I will also say that we've had some abandoned cars and active vehicles there, which we're also working on, which is not part of the aquifer protection, but it's something we've been working on with the Enfield Police Department. Um, even today, we have, we've had a truck that's been in and out, and we don't know why. Um, but outside of that, um, we'll be happy to abide by those conditions. We'll make sure they're completed within the next couple of weeks, if not earlier. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there any other uh, question? Any questions for the applicant? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, just, uh, Georgie did want me to clarify that this application does not include the car wash. Right. And that if it is unsewered, it's going to need to be, if it comes back as a car wash, it's an unsewered, it's going to need to come back before this commission. Otherwise, if it's hooked up to public order, it will not. Yeah, I, I will tell you that the, um, uh, we did find there's a well on the property. Um, we, uh, it's an active well um, in the um, northwest corner. Um, it's right on the grass line. There's actually a well cover on the property for that. Uh, there's also water hooked up to the building itself, and we just never tapped into it. It was more of a backup plan. The water actually utilized for the um, for the car wash operation. The front donut shop did have its own water. That was a separate idea. So there, we do have a well, and there is city water technically on the property too. So I'm not sure, but we'll work on staff to make sure it's there because we have every intention right. to keep it as a possibility in the future. We actually have some interest already on it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing none, I'll entertain any, any other questions. The applicant's all set, staff's all set. I'll entertain a motion to approve. And Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve ARA number 25-301, otherwise known as 307 Hazard Avenue, aquifer registration renewal over A45, A80 aquifer for the Gulf Gas Station, Sarah Lutzmore of Sam's Food Stores, applicant, Triano Realty Corp. Owners, map 83, lot 85, HV 33 zone, with the following conditions. Uh, number one, the oil tank located in the rear of the property to be removed. And number two, the storm drain in the rear of the property will be cleaned and free of debris to ensure proper access for stormwater drainage. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. Motion made by Secretary Petronella. Seconded by Commissioner Holinsky. Is there any discussion on a motion? Seeing none, Mr. Secretary, whenever you're ready for roll. Yes, approved. Four. Virginia Four. 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 And John Petronella is four. Thank you. Let the records show there was unanimous approval of this act for protection. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you, you know, for all the work. Thank you. Before I take an announcement for German, I just want to make a point just to to, um, to, to staff to Lori. I, because I know Georgie's not here tonight, I want to personally thank her for the fine job she has done since at least I've been on this board the last year and a half on the Act for Protection. I believe we're pretty much caught up. I know there's going to be some other renewals because of ownership changes possibly coming down the road, but I believe, Lori, if I'm not mistaken, she's we're finally in compliance with this program, pretty well caught up, and I think a lot of that has to do with the work she did for us. Uh, like, it completely all the work she did for yeah. us. So, I mean, uh, I think we've tried to do this three or four times. So, um, we're finally in compliance, which is very good. Very and I, good. I believe that we've caught or, you know, captured all of the parcels that are within the aquifer yeah. that may have or may have needed the the um, review renewals the yeah. renewals or, or a new one yeah so. well again thank yeah. i think from all of us i think we want to pass our thanks after the fine job she did i will absolutely do that she's thank probably you. watching right now so nice job georgie <laughs> all right i'll entertain a motion to adjourn the act for protection a motion made by commissioner majwandar seconded Second. by vice chairman degray to adjourn 
We're adjourning this meeting. We'll be picking up the planning and zoning meeting 41. at uh, 7 o'clock. We're adjourning this meeting at 6. 41. 41. Thank you very much, everybody. I'm just going to put that.
Everyone, we'll call this uh, meeting of the Enfield Planning Zoning Commission to order on Thursday, May 25th at 7 p.m. Uh, please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to, to the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you, fire evacuations right behind you, everybody, right out through those doors, or to my left down the east door, set of doors and then down the stairs and out through the back. If there is a, an issue, please walk away as far as you can from the building. Thank you. Secretary, roll call whenever you can, please, whenever you're ready. Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, Lou Fiore? Here. Virginia Higley? Here. Linda DeGray? Here. John Petronella is here. Francis Alimo? Here. Kiran Majbudar? Here. Kenneth Olenski. Here. Vinnie Gorillo is absent. Christian D'Antonio. Here. And Nicholas Lefakis is absent. Absent. Thank you. Secretary, making a motion to approve the minutes of a regular meeting for May 11th. So moved. Motion made by Vice Chairman yeah. Higley, seconded by Vice Chairman DeGray to accept the minutes of our regular meeting on Thursday, May 11th. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing on all those in favor of accepting the minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 The record showed it was unanimous to accept the minutes of uh, May 11th. Town Attorney Report, everybody received the update today from the Town Attorney, uh, dated May 25th. Yeah. Move on to uh, public uh, communication, public participation. At this point in the meeting, the Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions related to Planning and Zoning in Enfield. From anyone who is present, provided that no one may discuss any matter of business at this time that is already elsewhere on the agenda, any matter as part of an open public hearing of this commission, or any matter where a decision of the commission may be pending, that also includes anything that's in pending legal activity. Is there anyone who would like to speak in front of the commission tonight? Is there anyone who would like to speak in front of the commission tonight? For the final third time, seeing none, I move the public participation is closed. There's no bond releases tonight. There's no presentations tonight. We did receive notice that the applicant for uh, PH3063 has requested an extension and remain on the table. Okay, everybody? Mm -hmm. That also goes just to let you know for um, uh, New business later on, FLD 45, because it's the same applicant. They've asked for an extension to stay on the table. So we won't be discussing that yep. tonight. Okay. Seeing that, we're now off to a new public hearings. Mr. Secretary for PH 3066, whenever you're ready. Yep. Uh, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at the regular meeting on Thursday, uh, May 25th, at, uh, 2023, at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers at 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following. Public hearing. Number 3066, 600 Enfield Street, application for a car wash, gas station, and convenience store. Shiraz Chowdhury, applicant, Triano Realty owner, map 32, lot 8, BL zone. Thank you. Is the applicant and the representative here tonight? Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the commission, my name is Dave Zayax. I'm a professional engineer with F.A. Hesketh Associates. We're located down in East Granby. And um, with me this evening is uh, Frank Triano representing uh, the owners of the property. Uh, Shiraz Choudhury, uh, who is uh, going to be the uh, operator of the gas station and the car wash. Um, Greg Neffinger, who is the architect for uh, the project. And Paul Tanner, who is uh, an environmental uh, DEP expert uh, dealing with things such as contamination at gas station sites and things of that nature. He's here to say a few words this evening. Um, the plans that you're looking at are dated uh, April 5th. And uh, at this point, I just turn it over to Frank for a few minute, uh, for, for a minute just to say a couple of words. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Frank Triano from Triano Realty Corporation. Um, we've, uh, Triano Realty Corporation has owned this property for probably 50 plus years, if not 60. Um, we're coming forward with an application to do the exact same purposes and uses that we've done in the past. Um, it was actually originally operated by our family. We actually had it as one of our properties. I used to pump gas there myself um, when I was in high school. 
if that dates me too much, I'm not sure. Um, we've had uh, several people that looked at the site. We had a small tenant before. We have a, a, a new tenant right now that would like to take it over that uh, we have a lot of confidence in, and we wanted to actually represent the application ourselves to show that confidence. Um, he has multiple gas stations. We have a, a, a team of consultants and people for any questions to try to be prepared so we can keep moving forward on the application. Uh, met with the town several times. We're, we're happy with all the comments that they've made and we wanted to make sure we followed up. We'll make sure we brought everybody here to make sure we can answer any questions that you may have. And we have a small presentation that we'd like to actually pursue. So. I've uh, put up a slide uh, that shows you the um, the site at 600 Enfield Street, it's like, I guess, about a quarter of a mile or so, just north of the uh, town hall here. It's zoned uh, BL. It's, locate, it's all located over on the west side of Enfield Street. Zone BL, uh, 1.31 acres. Um, we're here basically for a special permit, but under Section 3.40, which covers all of the issues of nonconformities, because uh, both the existing gas use and the car wash use and, and just about everything else on the site is one form of a nonconformity or another uh, under the current regulations. Um, and these are long term, as Frank said, the gas station and the uh, car wash and the like have been there for decades. Um, with regards to wetlands, we had no direct impacts, but we were within the upland review area. Uh, just to the north of the site is Grape Brook that abuts us. And uh, so therefore, we were in the upland review area for uh, Great Brook, and uh, we had to file a wetlands permit, which uh, we received approval for uh, this past March. This is uh, sort of an overlay in yellow over the Google aerial, so you can just see how, uh, how it fits in relative to the uh, surrounding topography. Again, you can see this label Great Brook, that's that wooded corridor that abuts us to the north. After that is Town Park. I think that's La Salette Park. Is that what that's called, as I recall? Uh, and then to the south of us is the shopping center that was owned by the Triano family, right, Frank, at one time, and then you guys sold that in 07. In 07. Uh, but you can see uh, skewed to Enfield Street on the right, on the left, on the right hand side there is the car wash is skewed. Uh, then there's the canopy, and then there's a small garage building up near the north side of the uh, site. And across the street, there is a row of uh, single-family homes. Um, this is a photo of, uh, of the site taken from Enfield Street. And I, I think the photo sort of speaks for itself. Obviously, the site needs a, uh, a refurbishment. Um, this is a street view. If you were standing just on the north corner of the site looking south down Enfield Street, you can see uh, there's the sidewalk and the aprons and, and the landscaping are in uh, sad condition. Everything needs to be refurbished along the frontage of the property. This is a sort of colored up version of sheet LA1. This is uh, the sheet that we have spent the most time working with staff. Uh, there's been a couple of ART meetings, meetings with the police department, fire department, and um, uh, the engineering department. Everybody's been very cooperative, and uh, there's been a number of changes made to the plans uh, over the last few months before we made a formal application. Uh, basically, what I've indicated on this plan is uh, in the orange color, uh, this is the small garage area. It was used as an office and garage when the Trianos ran a small uh, used car lot, actually, right in this corner over here is another use that was on the property. That hasn't been used for a number of years. Uh, this long building here is the tunnel, the car wash tunnel, which will remain. This box here in the front is the existing canopy. Uh, fortunately, the canopy is actually behind the front yard, so there's one there's one conforming feature on the on the uh, site. Uh, located off to the side here, to the south of the car wash, was an, uh, a series of open bay self-service uh, wash uh, areas that you could you know physically wash the car yourself. That will be demolished, and in its place there will be a 2,770 square foot sort of conventional convenience store that you see at all the gas stations built there. Um, 
the, the plan is to uh, renovate the existing canopy. We think we can reuse that. And that will be, uh, you know, repainted, re, uh, rewired. There'll be new site, uh, new lighting underneath the canopy. Typical LED style lighting you see at the car washes or the uh, the gas stations now. And um, then there will be uh, uh, five new pump locations installed underneath. We're sort of where the existing isle, islands are now. There, uh, each one of those is dual sided. So in theory, you could have ten cars. You could be fueling ten cars at one time. But you know, our experience is that with these types of uh, facilities, that almost never happens. People come in one side or the other because the. Uh, for some reason, as a country, we never decided exactly what side of the car the fuel fueling uh, should be. So we have, I don't know if it's half the cars or not. I've studied that for a while. I gave up whether half the cars are on the left side or half the cars are on the right side. But, um, you know, you know how these gas stations work. You got one car pointing in one direction, one car pointing in the other. But there will be five pump locations there. There's no parking in front of the convenience store. We looked at different options for doing that. but. It's, it's just too tight to do that. So there'll be a, a sidewalk that comes out in front of the uh, convenience store with a row of bollards. And, uh, you know, there's no, no parking there. I'm not really a big fan of putting parking in front of the convenience store real close to the pumps anyhow. We've done it on a number of locations, but uh, I've never been a big fan of that approach. Too many cars backing in and out all over the place. Um, what we're proposing here, though, is we're going to have uh, two parking spaces down here on the south side. One would be an ADA handicap parking, which will have a route over to the front door of the convenience store. Then another parking space for customers that aren't gassing up. And then there's three parking spaces here in the front designated. Um, along Enfield Street, um, we met with, you know, meeting with staff. We all recognized the sidewalk is in terrible condition. There isn't an appropriate handicap ramps. So we're going to be replacing that sidewalk, uh, setting it back from the roadway. Right now, it's sort of right on the edge of the curbing uh, Enfield Street. We're going to set that back appropriately. Put the right ramps in per the state DOT standards. It's sort of a combination town standard and DOT standard. And then we're going to peel these islands back a little bit so we can get some landscaped islands behind the sidewalk as well. Up here in this uh, sort of northeast corner, uh, we're going to be removing all the pavement. This is all paved currently. We're going to take that out where they used to uh, park the uh, used cars for sale and turn that into a lawn area. And then working again with staff, we're going to keep the same. We're going to keep three driveways, but we're going to reconfigure those and make them much tighter. Right now, this one in particular is probably 50 or 60 feet wide. We're going to tighten those up to 30 feet. So the driveway down here on the south end, this will be a two way driveway. The one in the middle, this will be a two-way driveway, but we all decided to make this one an in-driveway only. And um, re the, the real purpose for that is really it lines up nicely with the stacking that would go around the building in a counterclockwise fashion. You would empty the car wash on this side, and then you exit the car wash on this side. So uh, that seems to work out nicely. And there's vacuums located up here, up near the north side of the uh, facility over here. The one thing we did introduce here is uh, sort of a bailout lane around the building. It's also a fire lane around the building. So uh, for instance, if you come into the dumpsters located over here in the southwest corner, if you, if you come to pick up the uh, trash in the dumpster, the dumpster truck will be able to leave without having to turn around. Um, if you're in the car wash lane and you decide to change your mind or suddenly realize you're in the car wash lane and you don't want to be there, you'll be able to bail out and go around. And then uh, more importantly, as the, the fire department can get their vehicle around the building if they so, so need to do on, for a, an emergency situation. Um, so that's the way the basic flow of it is. Under the canopy, you'll be able to move around you know, in a conventional fashion and go in and out of either driveway. Um, we are installing a new drainage system. Uh, the drainage system out there needs a lot of help, and that was all reviewed at the time with the Wetlands Commission. They were obviously particularly concerned about updating the drainage system because uh, the site does drain to Great Brook. Uh, there will be new utilities installed for the convenience store. Um, presently, the uh, car wash um, is hooked up to the town sewer system, 
and uh, and it has a it's, it actually has its own well located just to the rear of the car wash uh, over in this area over here there's a manhole in the asphalt and that uh, well is located over there it's all been Frank just gave me the I uh, finally got a copy of the license from the uh, from the state uh, uh, health department on that well um, so that's all been licensed the proper way and Paul Tanner will talk about that in a few moments uh, so the intent is to continue to use the well for water at the uh, at the car wash and then of course like I said it's connected to the sanitary sewer the, com the convenience store will be connected to a new water line out to the street a uh, new sanitary sewer line and then uh, new electrical service brought in um, the good news is we're reducing the impervious coverage down from, it's right now about 88.2%. We're going to be dropping it down to 81% uh, by adding in some uh, new landscaping aisles. Um, the plan is to refurbish the two existing pylon signs. Uh, one sign is located down in this corner over here, the southeast corner. That's the, ga that's the price sign for the gas station. And that will be upgraded to the new digital kind of signs that uh, that they use, because um, we all know they change the gas price about four times a day now, so uh, they, they need it to be digital. Um, and then um, the other sign is over here in this island. We're, we're creating an island as you come out of the car wash. There's an existing small pylon sign there. They're going to resign that um, with the name of the facility. Uh, we mentioned the. Um, the dumpster pad that's down here in the southwest corner that'll be fenced in and uh, it's relatively modest um, just for the facility um, this is the circulation plan that I prepared I'm not sure staff even has even seen this yet because uh, there was a comment in the staff report uh, we've got shown 12 cars going around the car wash um, I would I would expect the car wash in this location probably would never see that many cars, but there's there's the ability to stack 12 uh, along the building and then still have plenty of circulation around the car wash. That was something we worked out with with the staff. And then here's I showed the uh, the 10 park potential parking locations underneath the canopy. But again, I I'd be surprised if we'd ever saw 10 cars under that canopy at one time. Um, this is the landscaping plan that was included in the package. Um, it shows that what we're planning on doing is installing uh, four uh, dogwood shade trees along the uh, frontage here. And then over here, uh, we have uh, one larger maple tree down here outside the, uh, the right of way. The state won't let me plant that tree inside the right of way, so I had to move it back a little ways. And then we'll have some nice low shrubbery behind the sidewalk. Uh, along the frontage. I've got to keep that low because of the sight line concerns. DOT won't let me put any uh, larger shrubberies uh, within the right of way. And then we have some other small plantings around the back side of this foundation. And, uh, you know, so the site, you know, for, for a, a tight gas station will be uh, nicely uh, landscaped. Um, at this point, I think what I'd like to do is uh, have Greg come up just for a moment and talk about his ideas for um, refinishing the uh, car wash and then um, how we're going to handle the front, in, front look of the, uh, the new convenience store that you can see from uh, Enfield Street. Greg, did you want to come on up? Yeah, why don't you? Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Neffinger. I'm the architect. Uh, for the project. Um, thank you, David, for that great presentation. Oh, yes, uh, 76 Bon Air Avenue, West Springfield, Massachusetts, 01089. You're welcome. Uh, who would have thought that a demolition of an addition and an, a rebuilding of an addition would uh, cause so much work uh, underground and everything. David did a great presentation, and, and it's, I think it's really going to make the, the site uh, a wonderful site with the proper drainage, the proper environmental, uh, beautiful landscaping. And uh, we've had a great time working with the staff, too, uh, giving us comments and instructions on how we can make this a better site. I've worked with Shiraz, uh, Shiraz Chowdhury now on uh, this is the fourth um, 
convenience store gas station I've worked on, and I can say that every project I've worked on, he has made it more beautiful than my drawings could do. Uh, and um, that some of that stonework you see there is from actually uh, uh, Black Rock Turnpike um, in Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, and um, also, uh, I like to say also the interiors are very uh, uh, modern, clean, uh, and very nicely done. And uh, so I think that this uh, is going to have no resemblance to what's there today. Uh, so, and that's the whole intention is to uh, to beautify the site. Uh, as uh, David said, that um, the existing um, uh, addition on the side that's being used for the car wash for self service car wash is uh, non conforming, pre existing non conforming. It's built right up to the property line, and we are going to be demoing that. And the new addition is going to be totally conforming uh, in setbacks, square footage, et cetera, and we're actually reducing the, uh, the impervious area. Uh, and also, I, I think another big pro uh, positive part of the project is that we're actually reducing impervious area off of our site. I don't know if you noticed that, but uh, by Enfield Street, that whole state property area that's all paved, that's all going to be landscaped now. And in the back near Great Brook, that also is going to have uh, the pavement removed. Uh, so, does the next slide have, uh, there's the floor plan, yes. So, uh, the, um, so there'll be a little deli inside there, and a typical convenience store, uh, a walk-in cooler, uh, and shelving. We're putting a handicapped bathroom in there, which is really nice, you know, that you come to a convenience store and the, the bathroom's available for the public. Uh, there's handicapped parking. There's two handicapped parking spaces, one in the front and one in the back. And, um, uh, and we're also going to be doing, you know, painting upgrade for the car wash and things of that nature. Uh, so, architecturally, we're putting an addition on an existing building. Um, I'm not sure if, if it's proper to take questions right now or... We want to continue on with your presentation. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Um, as, as Greg pointed out, uh, just going back, part of the existing nonconformity, but it really wasn't a, a nonconformity back when the Torianos owned both parcels. But this is the back piece he's talking about. There's sort of a moon-shaped encroachment off. This is the property line here. Uh, we're going to be removing that and loaming and seeding that um, so that that pavement will be coming out. And then all the pavement and concrete work on the site will be replaced so that the pads underneath the canopy and sidewalks and things of that nature will all be new concrete. And then the rest of the site, uh, the, that asphalt will be milled up in, in a new parking surface uh, put in. Just very quickly looking at the, uh, the uh, parking situation, uh, if you do the calculations, I have it shown on LA1. I believe we, we are required to have 16 parking spaces and um, we're showing 21 spaces, but that does include the 10 spaces under the pump, which is pretty typical for these type of uh, uh, gas station, convenience store uh, designs. That's typically allowed uh, in most areas. Would you That's, mind showing us the other, while you're on this slide, to show us the other parking? Yeah, sure. Uh, there's spaces located up here next to the little garage. Uh, one of them is a handicapped space. I just thought it was appropriate in case uh, someone in this building needs a handicapped park. This building, really, we're looking at using this for uh, maybe uh, a site manager's sort of little office, uh, or, or, but ma mainly there'll be sort of a, mostly a maintenance building. Uh, this, the, idea, the, the idea of uh, there's two garage doors, one on each side. Um, those would be used for um, site maintenance, um, you know, snow blowers, things of that thing, nature in the wintertime. Uh, and then possibly some additional storage in there related to the car wash operations or the convenience store if they need a little extra room to store beyond what's in the store. But we thought about just tearing it down and uh, making it go away. But on the other hand, it, 
just feel like it has some purpose. You know, it, it's on the site. We're going to clean it up, paint it, make it look like the car wash. Uh, and it's been there right along, but um, it, it doesn't have like a really super specific purpose right now. It just seems like something that you want to save, I, you know, rather than just tear it down. Um, and that's, uh, I think that's about it. Oh, and the, oh we have, uh, we also have a few, uh, I think it's three spaces tucked in over here near the entrance to the car wash where folks that are uh, working at the car wash can park there and, uh, and maybe there's a maintenance vehicle associated with the car wash or something, a van or something, a plumber or electrician, he could park over here as well. But we see like the, the one or two people who are working in the convenience store, they could park up here. People who are working at the car wash can park over here, so we leave these spaces in front for customers. There's no reason for the employees to be parked over there. And uh, one last um, uh, presentation we wanted to make was Paul Tanner. Uh, the staff had a lot of concerns uh, regarding uh, the cleanup on the site. It's been ongoing and there's more to do. Um, and then I'll just make a couple of uh, comments regarding the actual staff comments as well. Thank you, David. So my name is Paul Tanner. Uh, my business address is um, 293 Bridge Street in Springfield, Mass. My company is O'Reilly, Talbot, and Oaken Engineers been working with the Trianos for a, a good number of years. I, I don't know whether I've sat in front of this commission before. I've done some other environmental work in town. Me, you, you might know of me. Um, so the issue with this site is it is sitting on a sand wedge, as you can imagine. We've got clay at about 20 feet. That's about the base level of Great Brook at our north boundary. And um, through the work I've done over the years here, uh, we, we took the old tanks away a couple of years ago. That was just to the, uh, to the west of the canopy. And uh, we, we also did some precursor test borings uh, around the property. And we've identified beneath the, uh, the canopy itself and between the, the car wash tunnel and the canopy, there is uh, a small expanse of impacted soil from, from way back when, 50s, 60s perhaps. Um, it appears like many old gas stations, you have former generations of tanks and they've migrated around the property 20 years at, at a time. And um, beneath the north corner of the canopy, there's actually a closed in place uh, diesel tank that's filled with concrete and uh, Right about there is um, approximately an eight foot thick, six or so feet down, excuse me, uh, expanse of soil that has a petroleum odor. There is no uh, free petroleum product. There's no layer of product as you might see in a, in a, a rich um, gas station where there's been a lot of, of spillage. So it appears we have historical issues at depth. And um, the diagram you see in front of you has a dotted line. That's an area during construction we've designated as a soil management area. We're expecting if you dig down, say six feet or greater, you might hit some impacted soil. Less than that, not, uh, it's very unlikely. So um, the parties, the owner and the applicant have um, an agreement, it's a soil management plan that uh, when, when the uh, earth is opened up to create the infrastructure, to put in the, the, the piping and the tanks, that um, a representative of my firm would, would be on site um, to manage soils if, if they're encountered. So what that typically would, would involve is if there are soils with a, an odor or staining or an indication of, of hydrocarbon, then they, they go on top of plastic um, and then be managed appropriately. Typically, um, we, we would put them in a, in a roll-off container and have it, have it hauled away. Um, we have agreements with Connecticut DEP for some, some additional work that we will do uh, during construction and post-construction, and that involves some additional soil tests that they've requested. And um, they want to do a well impact survey. So we have, as, as you know, an on-site water supply well, which I haven't seen the details on, but I, now I know where it is. 
Um, and uh, typically we have to do a quarter mile radius and see if, if there are any drinking water wells. I don't believe, uh, I'm not expecting any within the sphere of this area. Um, and then the, the blue X's are proposed groundwater monitoring well locations. And uh, at the conclusion of this work, we have a commitment to get a report into the agency, to Connecticut DEP. Um, Alessandra Alling is our case manager. We have a good rapport, and we will report the findings. Um, with, with a site like this, I would expect to see um, some groundwater impacts at, at the nucleus, right, right between those two buildings, but at the periphery, by that extra building we mentioned on the north side and heading toward the top of slope um, toward, toward Great Brook, I, I wouldn't expect uh, impacts. We did a couple of borings there a few years ago and they, they look clean. So um, it's a typical old gas station scenario where you have a pot of soil. You can't really get to it, but you can manage it in place. and. Um, manage the impacts through monitoring and, and uh, you know, regular testing of, of the wells and, and uh, allowing nature to take its course to clean up the, uh, the impacts. Um, the, the additional soil testing that we've committed to with, with our, our DEP case manager is uh, they asked for some more testing underneath where that closed in place tank was fairly routine. Uh, we've already done a boring there and it, it was clean underneath that depth of tank, but they want to get some more data. We'll, we'll, we'll get it to them. Um, uh, they wanted a few more tests under, under the canopy. We, we mentioned what five new um, dispensers going in. Um, so we'll have ample opportunity to take a few more samples and the, they would be tested for the typical petroleum tests that are required. And, um, and then when we put in the groundwater monitoring wells, those five, five or so X's, we would also take additional tests uh, of soil at, at, you know, above the water table, at the water table, below the water table. Um, water table here is about um, 18 or so feet down. And uh, when we excavated for, to take the tanks away, uh, the most recent generation of tanks, we, we had, um, soil instability problems. We couldn't dig fast enough to get down to the virgin soil to test it for, to satisfy DEP. So they're asking for a little more. Uh, oftentimes a site like this where it's tight between buildings and stanchions for, uh, or footings for a canopy, we just can't get down to where we have to and we have to call it quits for safety uh, considerations. And, and that happened when we pulled, pulled the tanks. Um, so that's, uh, in a nutshell, we, we have an old historically impacted gasoline station, um, very common for Connecticut. I think we have a good management plan in place. Uh, we will um, get the data we need to, to show that the water resources are protected. And um, so this one is, to my, in my 34 years of experience, this is a very typical site. And I'm pleased to see it go go back into productive use. Thank you. I wouldn't go away. <laughs> I'm going to be a few questions for you. Um, regarding the staff uh, comments, um, we had, as I stated, uh, one or two ART meetings, and then plus of other conversations with staff. Um, as far as I know, the latest is that the police uh, folks have um, indicated no comments with the revised plans, fire department the same way. I did meet with the fire department in, uh, separately and went over uh, their concerns and addressed those. Uh, the town engineer, I believe, is signed off from his perspective. And then there's uh, planning comments uh, that you all have. And a lot of that, I sympathize with the planning commission, or planning staff, in that this is a giant non-conforming it's a little site, but it's all non-conforming, and, and we've had to struggle with these around town over the years. I've been working, as you know, working in town forever, and, and, we, and we, we, get, we go to the, some of these sites all the time, and it's, the commission's always been fairly flexible, and it's, which the, pot, the, the, the zoning regulations give you the authority to do that, use your best judgment in many cases. So I think you know, we've done our best to try to 
help out on some of the nonconformities. The good news is the buildings themselves are, are, are in conformance, so we don't have uh, setback issues on the buildings. Um, and, uh, you know, I think you've, you know, the, big, the big thing is the complete renovation of the canopy and the pumps and things of that nature that will go and the additional landscaping and sidewalk work along Enfield Street will really dress up this site dramatically over the, what it looks like uh, presently. So at this point, I'd be happy to answer uh, any questions and from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. Questions from the commission? Later, you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna pass and wait to the end. Questions from the commission? Mr. Hol Commissioner Holinsky. Uh, just, just to clarify um, on, the, on the diagram here, the uh, 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 the vacuum cleaners will be all removed, right? They're going to be gone? No, we're going to be leaving two of them up near the north end. They're probably going to get they, replaced with new units. Where they yeah, there's, I think there's four of them back there now. We're going to, we're going to keep two. So they would say, not, would that area next to the storage building, you know, on the right-hand side of the car wash as you drive in, would that area to, my, to, to the right um, be... Uh, Repaved. Yeah, the entire site's going to be repaved. So that would be all repaved. And, yeah. And, and, uh, would, the building, a, would the building, storage building, be refurbished at all or repaved? Yeah, the intent is to dress it up and make it look like the car wash, paint it, and, and okay. you know, put the same orange band. That orange band is going to show up Probably on the... All schemes would all kind of... Blend yeah. In. Okay. Freshen every, everything up. Um, So assuming the car wash uh, would be used at some time, uh, is it anticipated there would be any startup issues with the I'm not sure about that. I'd have to ask maybe Frank. Uh, it, or any of that kind of thing that would I, have I, to be done to, to perhaps... Uh, you know, get that up and running. Yeah, the the intent is to uh, is is to, is to modernize it and, and operate it. Yes, definitely. I know there was some confusion, and it might even be on my part on on some of our plans that have gotten old now, uh, where there was some talk about phasing and things like that. But the intent is to is to get this done all at the same time. Yeah, the issue seems to be we've got this kind of this nebulous issue whereby we're not really sure what else is there. From a, from an environmental standpoint, or what uh, other issues may yeah. arise? Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I've done a lot of these yeah. gas stations over the years, and they're all in the same boat, you know. But the, they're heavily monitored and regulated by DEP, and then they have people like Paul that are required to be on the process. So, if they bump into some more contaminated soil or something like that, it's going to have to be dealt with. You know, there's no sure. there's no moonlight construction going on in this on these sites. You know, so. Okay, thank you. So I take it there's been some significant changes to your basically fundamental application since what staff gave us on May 25th, because that's certainly not. Uh, have you had a meeting since? Um, I'm sorry, not May 25th. I'm sorry, since staff gave us their their opinions here. So if something has something significantly changed over the last week or two, because clearly staff was under the impression that you were going to phase the. the yeah, and, and I apologize for that because I think it made me just what was on our plans. And I've been communicating by email back and forth to Matt a little bit to try to clarify some of that, but we haven't really had an opportunity to meet like this week to really hash that out, you know? Okay. But, um, and talking to my client and, 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 and Frank is that the intention is to refurbish this and, and, and operate it all as one, not, one. not some not kind a phase of in. plan or something. I, I'm not a hundred percent sure what, where that even came from to be honest with you, but it, it so gained it, life and stayed that way. I don't. I don't know why. It grew its own legs, right? It had its yeah. legs. Yeah. So my question, Matt basically, brought it to my is, attention. I didn't even. I wasn't even paying attention to it. To so honest. if you're going to, um, you know, basically turn the car wash on from day one, or you know, I'll say mm -hmm. day one, but you know, right? Um, and your intent to use the well water and not draw another line from Connecticut Water out to the Enfield Street, has that well been tested and signed off by Deep? That's one of the things Paul needs to do in the next okay. step. And so, if there's any issues with that, then we're going to have to bring in another water line from from Connecticut Water. Yeah. 
Okay. I, mean, I guess that's the question. So basically, if for the record, you're stating that if there's a problem with that test for using that well water, and you, if you want to operate the car wash, you will bring in another line for Connecticut water. Yes, I would. Yeah, definitely. Okay. I'll have some more questions. If we're lucky, it's good, and we don't yeah. have to buy more yeah, chlorinated water. You know, totally so understand. Right. Yeah. Other questions? Karan, you ready now? Or? Yeah, I think the question I have, thank you, is in the process of construction, whether it's a concrete pad that's probably only 6, 8, 12 inches deep to digging a trench, is there potential for anything that we don't know about below the ground contamination that could be disturbed? Paul? Yeah, that, that's, always, that's always a potential. And um, looking at our test boring data we have, we don't see evidence of that until about five or six feet. Um, that being said, we did have one um, tank dispenser location that we did remediate. We took out two roll-off boxes of soil um, from from when, when the tanks were removed and the lines. Uh, you can always come across something, and when they're excavating, um, you know, ver into, into uh, like a slot trench or, or excavating for tanks, uh, my Myself or one of my colleagues will be on site with the appropriate um, device to measure vapors in the soil and collect samples. That's just typical standard practice in a, in a gas station uh, redevelopment. Yeah. I guess my <clears throat> deeper issue here would be I'd like to see somebody like yourself or your staff to be monitoring the construction process and providing Yes, it's clean. No, it needs a little bit of help for two cubic feet here or 10 square feet over there type monitoring during the construction. Is that something that uh, the applicant, yourself, the owners would be willing to do during the construction? So we have good, I know DEP would be looking over your shoulders all along. Yeah, the, um, I think we're speaking the same language. Um, okay. when, when we're excavating, in, uh, you know, into material that hadn't been disturbed f since forever. You know, uh, it's hard for me to describe it, but yeah, we would we'll be on hand, monitoring, checking for vapors, checking the soil if, if the soil is impacted, because there will be um, essentially uh, waste soils. Because you, when you're excavating, you have to put in the appropriate um, engineering characteristics of fill back, so that displaced soil will be managed. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just keep the planning staff informed as you go along. But thank you. Yeah, thank and you. I think um, in, in a, some earlier email discourses we've had, um, maybe not with the commission, but with staff, um, we, we did commit to a kickoff meeting pre-construction, and then we can resolve a communication plan. You know, is it a monthly yeah. memo or, or, or what, whatever makes sense that we can keep folks informed? I like the planning where you're reducing a lot of the nonconformity as well as updating the entire site equipment and the building. And that's good news. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Petronella. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Uh, I have a question regarding, uh, regarding Connecticut DEP. Um, uh, construction can't start until you get some sort of a sign off from them. Is that? Yeah. No, you, you can proceed? Yeah. Okay. Um, if if something uh, that in, within their review uh, in, impedes something else where, where you have to move or change something, is that a possibility? Can that happen down the road? I, I don't understand the question. Like if you start construction and then in their review they, they, they come up with something that they want or a requirement that would alter the site plan, can that happen? I, I don't see that happening. Oh, oh okay. Um, question for the architect on the elevation plans on, on the uh, rendering um, where you're showing a stone on a front elevation um, and, and uh, there's not a plan uh, it's it's just uh, uh, you know the rendering that shows the photos of the uh, exterior 
um, which I guess is what you're going to propose to use. If I look at your uh, L or A2 plan, you're showing painted concrete block on the front elevation, which contradicts what, what you show for the stone also on the sidewall. So uh, it's it's probably just a coordination issue or cleanup. But uh, yes, if, if in fact that says that there it is uh, it isn't the intent is to have that stone uh, to be on the whole front facade facing the uh, the uh, the pumps right so you're uh, drawing a to uh, your I'll, elevation I'll have to south that. elevation it would have to be uh, changed to, yes, to reflect thank that you. okay just uh, pointing that out um, and as far as parking and loading um, deliveries to the convenience store I guess are going to come around to the back where it says van access parking that's correct um, so that'd be limited to just the, uh, um, you know, smaller vans, uh, tight sight. It, it just, it can't accept uh, too many large vehicles. Right. And that allows them to deliver at different hours without disturbing the, yeah. the, the pumps and things. Is this anticipated to be a 24 seven operation or, or unknown at the time? N no, it's not. Okay. All right. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Commissioner Lima. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, more to the soil scientist, um, dovetailing off what Commissioner, Commissioner Petronella had said. So with the DEP, um, is it safe to say they're going to be an authority of jurisdiction as well as local officials, i.e. this isn't happening unless they're satisfied? Um, it, it's, not a, it's not an if, if then. They, they agree that this is a, a, a reasonable reuse and in the process of opening up the earth to put in the infrastructure, we get our samples. They, they're fine to wait uh, until the construction is complete to get the report from me with the status. But they're always monitoring and overseeing. I, I uh, wouldn't say. They, they trust the LEP. I'm a like Connecticut licensed gotcha. environmental professional, mm -hmm. um, you know, with my reputation and licensure. Um, to act essentially not really as their agent, but as the right. the bound uh, the mm -hmm. liaison between the the public and and the government. <clears throat> so in a sense, you're you're unearthing what could potentially be something hazardous and uh, mitigating and fixing it as you go. Correct. Which is located next to a rook, or a stone stroke from a brook. So if you're not doing this, potentially there's hazards that we would never know of. So if you find them, you're mitigating. And That's moving. correct. And, and I'll go back to my point about um, <clears throat> our precursor data from the borings at distance from the problem area I mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, it didn't show uh, hydrocarbon impact. So I'm, I'm feeling reasonably confident. And this is typical of, of pollution issues that are old. It has a nucleus and then, and right. then it's, it, it dissipates and within uh, tens to 100 feet or so, it, mm -hmm. it's um, uh, essentially attenuated. That's good. good. Yeah. Well, I feel good about this. I think you're doing um, a site cleanup, maybe, uh, remodeling, and um, any potential hazards are being removed. Yeah. And uh, so I think, I, I think it's a good thing, and I think you've got a good plan there. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Higley. I have two questions uh, through the chair to staff. The first one being, um, I noticed that some of the front parking is in the state right of way. Do we have the authority to approve something that's state regulated and not town regulated? That's my first question. And the second question just went out of my head. Oh, um, you talked about um, the, um, well, first of all, it's, it's a two-parter. You talked about the office uh, not being mentioned on the application and it's part of the special use permit. So I wonder how we get around that. And I want to know if Matt's concerns have been met with his staff review comments dated May 5th, because I had a lot of concern if they're not met. Thank you. Thank you. I had a couple more qu questions myself, but I thought we maybe we can skip for a second, come back to you just to see if any, anybody in the public wants to speak for or against the application so we can get through that. We, I don't, unless I have to, you can stay there. Is there anyone, uh, <laughs> anyone in the public who'd like to speak for or against this application? 
Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak for or against this application for the final time, for or against the site? Seeing that, I don't want to forget that, so that's done. Good, good point. Um, Just to answer one question yeah. of uh, Commissioner Higley is, uh, Actually, the, the three parking spaces closest to the right of way are on our property. Uh, I made sure of that. But DEP or DOT, rather, uh, we have to go for an encroachment permit for this. So uh, I'm sure they will do their very thorough review like they normally do. And uh, yeah. hopefully, they agree that we've done everything in an so appropriate fashion. So I don't have to change. Technically, we're not approving something in the state right away. I was a little nervous yeah. about that. No, okay. you should thank be. You. We're fine. Yes. And thank you. Just answer one of my questions. I was going to ask if you've met with the state uh, since this is a high. No, they're they're very busy, as yeah. you know. Yeah, so they're waiting for you folks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not nice of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, good luck with that. I mean, so you still have yet to. Uh, we yeah. have about 25 applications in front of them right now that we're <laughs> waiting for. Waiting for something. Yeah. Yes. Well, that checked off one of my questions. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner D'Antonio. Uh, I want to say the the entryways were uh, the entryways on the sidewalk were a, a big concern of mine. A terrible place to to just drive through and, and especially to walk through. So I appreciate the uh, the detail, uh, the attention to detail in, in addressing uh, both of those. Uh, what I did want to ask regarding uh, the landscaping and the sidewalks um, uh, on the north side of the property, um, there's let's say uh, a, a ten foot uh, grass shoulder between the sidewalk of the adjacent property and the south side has, um, you know, let's say three feet. So how did you decide to to put the sidewalk um, and the landscaping? So it seems you kind of went somewhere in between with the five foot median. And, and I'm wondering if you had considered uh, landscaping on the other side of the sidewalk between the street, kind of what dictates your design there? Oh, OK. I, I see where you're, you're going. Yeah. Um, Yet, uh, one thing I, I really don't like to do is to put uh, concrete and curb integral to each other. It's done all the time, and I don't think that's really appropriate in, in New England, per se, you know, because the sidewalk acts as a snow shelf. Um, so we try to introduce a snow shelf of like three to five feet, which I think we're successful here. Uh, typically, that's just grass between the sidewalk and the curb because that's all uh, that's all DOT. DOT is going to give me a hard time about the landscaping that I have, but I'll I'll hang tough and we'll have to sign all kinds of waivers and agreements and maintenance things and everything with them. But they'll eventually give in and give us the, give us the landscaping, but they're not going to make it easy. But they will not allow us to put any landscaping in front of the sidewalk between the curb and the sidewalk. That'll be grass. Thanks for that. Well, I had a couple more questions. Um, <clears throat> and basically, you have not done any traffic analysis, correct, at this point? No, I, I you know, given that it's an existing car, uh, gas station, uh, the sight lines are excellent in both directions. So uh, I don't think if I turn my traffic department on this, they're going to give us any words of wisdom that we can't. So you don't think the state's going to ask you for traffic no, information? No, no. This one? They'll be concerned about the uh, uh, the sight lines. Yeah, you cut one of the curb and, cuts and, down. Yeah, And we've cut the curb yeah. cuts way yeah. down. So I yep. think they'll be okay. The other question, our assistant. I don't want to sound overly optimistic, but I think they're yeah. going to be okay. Okay. Good luck. Uh, the assistant engineer uh, mentioned in, in our packet here that he wanted a detailed cross-section. And it should be added for the sidewalk proposed in the state right away. Yeah, that's been done. That's been done. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And one of the things I'm basically I'd, I'd like to hear some discussion from staff and, and you about how the overlay zone plays into this and how it should play into this or should not. I don't know if you've had this discussion with them about the overlay zone or not. That's why I'm bringing it up. Go ahead, Matt. Well, uh, as far as we're, as far as oh, I'm sorry. If you yeah, want to listen uh, to Matt for yeah, sure, yeah, go right ahead. Go ahead, Matt. Absolutely. I, I wouldn't say that we had a discussion. We just pointed out that you're in the overlay zone. The overlay zone has certain standards and expectations about architecture, treatments, and that type of thing. W what's unique about this site, and we've been talking about it, and Dave's completely right to talk about it, is that it's, it's nonconforming almost in every possible respect, lawfully nonconforming. So as to the architecture part, first of all, the ability for zoning to regulate architecture is somewhat questionable, but be that as it may, the, the overlay zone exists. 
But certainly, to the extent that these buildings and their architecture is non-conforming, um, if they're making it arguably less non-conforming, yes. uh, then they're probably going in the right direction. We can we can have our own opinions about styles and aesthetics and colors and that kind of thing. But um, in this particular case, um, it would be it would be a bit more difficult, I think, to kind of impose rigid standards um, in terms of the overlay. Mm -hmm. zone itself. So we haven't really had that discussion, but I think we both kind of intuitively understand that uh, this is this is the situation for this site. Mm -hmm. So I don't know when you want us to answer questions that have been asked or my questions. Yeah, I, well, I guess uh, I, I, I'm happy to wait. Yeah, okay. Well, what's, have more. Yep, give us give us a second. We're probably getting there uh, pretty soon here. I, I would think. Basically, you're adding a, a kitchen to the to, to new to the new addition to the new building. Is that going to require a grease trap? I'm assuming it is. I put okay. one on the plan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you're aware of the grease trap re regulations here? Oh, okay. yes. Okay. I just want to make sure I missed all my highlights here. Everybody's looking at me sitting next to me. No, I highlight everything. <laughs> right, ladies? <laughs> you're doing good. Yeah, well, it's just what I do. It's just what I've been doing for a long time. It works. It works for me. That's why I make sure I didn't do anything. Yeah. One of the things that came up, um, I noticed from some of the email uh, trains, and I'm, I guess I'm looking to you as the applicant and staff, we didn't hear any response to this, is um, basically the loading area cannot be in a side setback, thus the plan does not comply, plan does not match what's shown on the architectural floor plan. And again, I know I know you've had some meetings since since this. And I've just started highlighting things that that stuck out to me. So I know there's been some discussions, and the plans have probably changed in some of these emails when this first started. Does that still apply now? Well, Mr. Chairman, the the small loading area that we've that I've yeah, can you pinpoint where yeah, I'm sorry. yeah, so, oh. so that I that I've uh, striped out. Let's see where. Yeah, it's it's right in the back over here. I actually went yep. ahead and striped out a loading area. Yep. Um, I suppose you could argue that the striping and the area crosses the, the, the side yard. But again, I think if you if you fall under the pretense of all the, the existing nonconformities, it's all pay, it's been paved there forever. So whether you call it a loading area or, or a car parked back there, I think that's kind of semantics. Okay. You know, it's mm -hmm. the, the the truck is going to park over there, and and you know small food delivery truck, uh, soda truck, things like that are going to come in the morning and... Yeah, so, yeah for instance, like where would uh, Coca-Cola truck come? When we were, where, where are the deliveries yeah, I mean, going to take gonna place? Come, they're going to come around the back and they're going to they're going to sit here for 10 minutes and unload their truck and yeah. take off in the so morning. So that would be a big trailer suit. So might not just be a small truck. It would be a, could be a big trailer from food uh, delivery. I don't think so. Maybe maybe one of those little half, half Cisco kind of trucks might yeah. show up here once in a while, okay. but... Uh, you know, not really a full tractor trailer, but not really a box trailer. But no, those few those minutes tweeners. of delivery are really. Yeah. OK. I don't usually worry about those very much. OK. I've tried to design around them. I've tried to outthink them. And then I go to a site and then there they are. I mean, it's just, you know, so. I think I'll wait. And I think I'll wait. Staff want to answer some of the questions that came up? Yeah, sure. Um, first of all, with respect to. This site, this is a case study. This is really, uh, if you're into this stuff, you could sink your teeth into it and, and have a ball. You know, it's got pretty much everything you'd want to have if you were trying to get a grad degree in planning or design. So uh, it, it's been a difficult one, to be honest with you. And I want to thank Dave and I want to thank his team for all the hard work and the heavy lifting and working with us uh, to try to come up with what we have. We, we think... Um, that on the technical side of stuff, we've done as much as we possibly can. Uh, a lot of the comments that were in that 5-5 report were really technical, I don't want to call them nits, but things that I think we can clean up and address by way of revised plans. We didn't have an opportunity to meet. Schedules just didn't allow. People were away. Um, there's a number of people on the team, and I'm pleased they could all come tonight, and they, I think they did a great presentation. So uh, getting to the questions um, from the commission, 
the small office building, call it the office building. Um, you know, tonight we're just kind of hearing for the first time that it would be used as a maintenance uh, building. No issues with that, really, frankly. Uh, it, it was used as a non-conforming office for the non-conforming car sales in the BL zone. The non-conforming car sales are going away, which is good, in addition to a lot of other non-conformities that are going to go away. So uh, we just want to make sure that, you know, the use is clarified, it's on the record, so that when we do the approval, everyone's on the same page. And when we go forward with building and other kind of permits and approvals, that they know what to expect, um, and there's no surprises in that respect. So we don't have any issues with the, the office. Uh, and again, on the 5-5 five, five comments, those are mostly technical. I did want to make a point that we took the approach to tonight, I think, because um, we're drawing a line really between the commission's function and role and, and responsibility as far as the judgment that you can apply and need to apply uh, to the specific circumstances and the regulations that apply to this. And we cited a number of regulations for you and hope, hopefully you had a chance to take a look at, at those so you'll understand. It's not our role to kind of usurp your authority or to supplant our judgment and opinion for yours. So collectively, you need to make the decision whether or not the application conforms with the applicable standards. We can't really do that for you. So we weren't prepared this evening to write up an approval as we typically do, like a draft motion, um, un until we had that sense. I think we have the sense. I think the consensus that I'm kind of getting is that you, you're generally okay with the plan. You like it. There's a lot of positives. Um, there may be some concerns, a little bit lingering concerns about different pieces, but on the whole, that we could probably return on the 8th and we could have something written up for you. We would anticipate that we would fold in, working with Dave and the team, uh, a number of conditions into that approval, particularly as they relate to uh, kind of that construction process and the end, the end stage of that construction pro process, the, the, the CZC yep. kind of CO kind of end of things, because we want to make sure that we're kind of managing and monitoring and things will go smoothly for everybody. Um, like you mentioned the well. So if, you know, the well is tested, DEP says it doesn't meet some exposure standard, they say you got to connect to the water, that's going to be a field mod, we're going to get the plan. So there's a number of different kind of things that we need to kind of manage. So that's really, I think, all that I had. I don't know if And, and that concerns me, you know, if I can, that, that does concern me because if, hypothetically, I don't want to be Dr. Doom here. <laughs> I don't no. mean to be that, but I'm trying to think of worst case scenario. Mm -hmm. Worst case scenario is the well water comes back and you can't use it for the car wash, which then means you got to do a major dig for the water line, which is probably something you don't really want to do. There's major digs on that property if you can avoid it. So I think those are some of the concerns that some of us might have that we're hoping work out. And, and, and there's a trust on your resume, what you're responsible for. And you brought that up quite clear as a professional, what your duties are. So I, I do appreciate that also. You made it right clear that, you know, you're kind of on the line in a way. You're not DEP's representative, but on a- Is the open bedrock hole for a bedrock well? I, I don't anticipate any land use uh, issues on this site or historical issues could possibly impact what's way down here in the bedrock. So just by geological layering, um, the, the Connecticut red beds are great water resources and they're generally clean. So we'll, we'll see. Yeah. Thank you. Well, Mr. Yeah. Chairman, may I make a suggestion? Yeah. That yeah. would be spinning off from what Matt was just saying is, uh, why, why don't we, unless there's more questions, why don't we pause here and we'll work with staff in the next week. It's only another week or two weeks. And we'll come up with the conditions of a, uh, that are appropriate. I'll make these couple of minor changes to the plans, get rid of the phasing stuff and everything, you know. And, uh, and then you'll have a nice clean package to vote on. Thank you. That's, I think that's what a lot of us are thinking about. I know there was another, another commissioner did have a question. Did you want to? For staff, if, mm -hmm. but I think we're we're thinking along the same line. Thank you. So we use the word tonight nonconformity, which we've used a lot in the past, and I haven't seen it in this zone. I don't think I have, but a lot of times in a residential zone, we have an addition coming on or a new two-car garage, and it's nonconforming. 
But and since we imposed the non-conforming onto that resident because we changed the zoning, is this the same thing here? Are we, was that overlay imposed on this property after those buildings were put in? Yeah, the the overlay came long after this site was ever developed. I, I, we had references back into the 60s, I guess, in, in terms of when yeah. bits and pieces of this were, were done. So I don't, I don't have a copy of the 60s regs in front of me, but I can assure you that they certainly weren't the same as they are now. So over time, incrementally, as you changed your landscape regs, as you changed your parking regs, as you changed whatever your regs were, um, sites like this, and I think Frank or somebody made the reference to it that there are many, many, particularly in this section of Route 5, you get the north end of Route 5, which developed historically, you know, quite a long time ago. Mm. I, I would I would hazard to say that probably 95% or 100% of those sites are probably almost completely nonconforming. Right. And, you know, and we talk about this in a residential use many times, right. and it's, right. it, I think it's the same here. Right, right. And that, that's been like that since I can remember. Right, so you so have it, in your it regulations. It became nonconforming over time. Right, but you left yourselves the opportunity and the ability to look at things on a case-by-case -case basis and to apply some judgment in terms of changes to the non-conforming circumstances of the site. Is this going to be 100% conforming when you're done? No, it's no. not. There's right. still going to be things that are not conforming. I just want to make that clear because I know we use that right term direction. a lot tonight, non-conforming, non-conforming, non, non right. So we got to right. understand so people can understand that right. it kind of was just happened that way. It happens to be that way because it's been there so long. Well, it's so not lawful non-conforming. A lawful non-conforming. It's a lawful non-conforming. Non non lawful non-conforming. Non 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 it's not unique to Enfield either. No, no, it's not. And I no, and I think, you know, it's understand. It's got to just, I just want to bring it out that that's the, that's the case here. Sure. It's yeah. non-conforming because it's been there so long. Right. And it's always been the way it is. Yep. Thank so, you. So to, uh, there seems to be a consensus that we're going to leave this public hearing open. We're just going to table this and let the applicant and staff come back and work some of these details out for us for the next meeting. Yep. Is everyone all, all set for yep. at least a question? We can, we're leaving the public hearing open, so there could be some more questions sure. coming back uh, in no two weeks. Yeah. Oh, just uh, on the, yep. what you were talking about, the, I think the water main runs right in front on the west side there. It does. You do have to go out that way. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been eight years, but I, mean, yeah. I think I know where the water main is still. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I think, I think you it, know where every water main is. I think so. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, so you won't have too much digging. Am I missing anything, Frank? Yeah, a couple. No. Um, I just, yeah, just listening, I just wanted to make a couple of quick comments and, and clarifications. Uh, number one, Matt, appreciate your comments, and, and we're on the same page. Um, we already have Connecticut water in the building. Yeah. Just so yeah. you know. Right. So we right. already have a water line that goes to the building. Right. Yeah. We just used the well already. So for the car wash operation, but we don't need to dig. We already have the well, but we already have the water line from the street already to the building. Right. So right. just to let you know that's already completed and it's already intact. Okay. Okay. Um, in regards to um, Paul Tanner, um, we have a great relationship with Paul. And um, regardless of the situation, whenever your, any of our sites are actually done, even if it's a tenant who's responsible for the site or if we're responsible for the site, we've engaged OTO. So regardless of what we found or didn't find, we wanted to have it documented. We're a big family. We, we do a lot of these. And needless to say, we wanted to make sure that we actually have that documentation for ourselves, not only for you. So we didn't go into this with any large concern. Paul is I'm almost on staff, if you will, to say that whenever we have a concern or where we need something, if we took tanks out of 777 Enfield Street or down on King Street, they were already engaged before we did it. We just like the documentation for ourselves. So there was no worry. It was that's what we do. And we'll stand behind that. So as you said, Paul's on the firing line. We'll say we are too. So we, we don't have any problem with that ourselves, and we're happy to stand up with it too. But that's what we do for a family. We actually do for our investments, and we make sure that we follow what's right and make sure it's kind of cross all the T's. So I just wanted to say that myself. Thank you. Uh, thanks. I'm glad you put that in the record. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Commissioner Just a quick question. Just a quick question. The well water sampling, I'm assuming that's already been done. Somebody's testing it. Will the results be available soon enough? I think that's something that Mr. Tanner would take care of during the process with this. I don't know if they've done it recently, wow. but I know that's going to be part of the process going forward. Okay. Yeah, Thank we'll you. commit to that as well. Yep. Okay, thank you. I think, we're, think we have a plan in place. Staff's happy to. So I'll entertain a motion to table uh, the uh, PH 3066. Double. Motion made by Commissioner Holinsky, seconded by Commissioner Alimo to table PH 3066. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Let the record show it's unanimous to uh, table this until the uh, next uh, meeting, which is June 8th. Thank you.
are moving on to uh, PH 3067 whenever you're ready, Mr. Secretary. Yes, uh, the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at the regular meeting on Thursday, May 25th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers at 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following. Public hearing number 3067, <clears throat> 161 Post Office Road. Application for resubdivision, Garrett Holmes, LLC, applicant, Mitchell Warner, owner, map 68, lot 20, uh, 232, BL zone. Thank you. Is the applicant or the representative here? I see you're setting up. I'll give you a couple seconds. Go ahead. Take your time. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Robin Pearson. I am an attorney with the firm of Alter and Pearson in Glastonbury, Connecticut, and I'm pleased to be here this evening on behalf of the applicant, Garrett Holmes, LLC. Um, you've seen or read the uh, initial uh, information in the public notice. Uh, just to recap some of the important aspects of that, I'd like to note again that this is a commercial subdivision or resubdivision. It is not a residential resubdivision. Um, the parcel is map 68, lot 232. It is a BL zone, which is a local business or business local zone. Uh, what you have before you this evening is one lot to be uh, from which a new lot would be created. Um, the total acreage is 12.37 acres. And it's a re-subdivision because the original subdivision was approved back in 2005. And at that time, it was divided into, it was approved um, for two lots. Uh, the lot that remains that's before you this evening, as well as the uh, another lot that has been carved out, approved as part of that subdivision, and it is now the um, has been sold and is operating as the package store on on the uh, fronting on um, Rafia Road. <clears throat> so what we are looking for this evening is technically a resubdivision because it creates a new lot out of that area that has already been subdivided. Um, at the time, there's actually a sort of interesting wrinkle about this that I'd like to bring to your attention, and that's the fact that at the time of the original subdivision back in 2005, there was a requirement that the open space requirement of the subdivision be met by deeding over um, 1.42 acres of open space by deed to the town of Enf Enfield, sort of on the northeast boundary of the property that adjoins the town-owned land, um, which is now school land. Um, as it turns out, that area to be conveyed to the town uh, because of um, some survey issues has actually, it's a little bit larger than 1.42, it's 1.436. Not much of a change or a difference, but that was to have taken place. Um, time passed, the lot that was created for the package store was sold off, uh, and for one reason or another, the transfer of the property to the town for the open space to go to the town was never made. The, um, when we realized that, that that property had not actually been transferred out and we did not represent the owner then, and my client is here um, with the intent of developing the new lot that's proposed as part of this resubdivision, um, so we were not involved in any of those transactions back when the original subdivision was approved, but realizing that transfer to the town had never been uh, effectuated, we proceeded to offer it with th working through the owner of the property. We proceeded to offer it to the town, and as it turned out, the town council made a decision in February of this year not to accept the land. So it's open space by virtue of the approval of the original subdivision, but it is not either deeded as such to the town, nor is there a conservation restriction on it. 
that would ensure that it, it is noted as being open space in compliance with your regulations. So the application that you now have for the resubdivision to create the new lot, uh, which my client hopes to develop, not something that's before us this evening, but hopes to develop, would um, also authorize the imposition of a conservation restriction over that area that was supposed to have been conveyed to the town. So you have a simple plan before you in that you've got 12.7 uh, acres of which a new lot is proposed. Um, we'll go through the specifics of that and a proposal to put a conservation restriction on that area of open space that this commission previously approved should be dedicated as open space. Um, we have received staff comments. Uh, we have prepared responses to them. Uh, we would like to go through those responses with you. But first, what I'd like to do is, uh, oh, I should also introduce my client, who is Gary, Mr. Gary Ucolito, who is uh, sitting back there. He can answer questions should you need him to do so. But um, he's not going to go through the specifics of the application. Um, with this application, you do have a draft conservation restriction agreement. It's actually been signed by the owner. It's being held in escrow pending approval of the resubdivision. Um, and uh, we will either file that, should you, we presume, that's, we'll be able to get an approval for the subdivision. It is a resubdivision. It is an administrative review. And uh, we expect everything should be in order in order to be able to create that compliant lot. Um, but we also have the possibility of reconfiguring the open space should you wish to do that, although that sort of complicates things. And frankly, the simplest way to handle this and just get everything done would be to file the conservation restriction over the area that you previously approved for open space. You interrupt, but I don't want to lose that thought. <laughs> Are you willing to discuss alternatives to that open space? Because it sounds like you mentioned you were willing to reconfigure it. Well, to address some of the issues that staff raised with okay. regard to the topography of the open space area, the answer is yes, and we do have something, okay. an alternative for you to consider should you prefer it. Okay, thank you. Okay. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but thank you. No. Nope. Good question. Hopefully that's a good answer. Um, you did, we did receive wetland approval for this resubdivision plan. I don't think an, an alternative shouldn't change that at all, but I hadn't thought about that until just now, but I don't see that it would. Um, but that's something I'd have to give a little bit of thought to. Um, so what I'd like to do now is ask uh, Timothy Hool, <laughs> who is our engineer, civil engineer, with BL companies just to go through the basics of the resubdivision plan and then the response to staff comments. Sure. Thank you. Uh, as mentioned, I'm Timothy Hool, uh, the civil engineer of record for this project, and also uh, we are BL, uh, represented from BL companies. We are the land surveyor of record as well. Uh, for the record, our address is 100 Constitution Plaza in Hartford. Uh, and quickly, I'll just run through some of the, the basic information on the lot. Uh, as mentioned, the property is formally known as 161 Post Office Road. Uh, it does have frontage on both Post Office Road and Raffia Road. Uh, and the lot that was previously carved out for the liquor store is right on the intersection of the two streets. The current lot is 12.7 acres. Uh, and as mentioned, it was originally subject to a subdivision in 2005 for that liquor store parcel. Uh, just summarizing some of the existing features, uh, there is an existing garage facility located towards the southeast portion. Uh, there is a dirt driveway from Post Office Road serving that, um, that garage facility. It's not shown on, on that current plan. Um, it is, we have since added it to the revised alternatives that we'll present to you uh, as a result of a uh, staff comment. Uh, there are wetland resource areas on the 
the, the larger parcel as a whole, the 12.7 acres, primarily defined as an unnamed uh, stream or water course located on the southeastern boundary of the property. Uh, in fact, that portion of the property line is defined by the center line of the water course. There is also a bordering wetland that kind of bubbles out into the site. Uh, that's kind of that, that larger bubble out. Um, and as mentioned, we did uh, go through wetlands and, and get their approval for the subdivision uh, or resubdivision, I should clarify. Uh, in addition to the wetlands, there are escarpment areas, pretty much all the, the steeper slopes heading towards the water course. Uh, the majority of those slopes are, you know, uh, approaching that two to one, somewhere in that three to one, two to one area. So they're quite steep. Uh, most of that area of the escarpment area is forested. Uh, there is some scrub brush kind of mixed in and then the shallower, more flat areas of the site is primarily open grassland. Uh, immediately around the garage facility, there are some uh, soil stockpiles and, and things of that nature. We also examined the site for FEMA flood zones, uh, especially knowing there's a water course there and this did show up. Uh, it, we confirmed there are no flood zones. It is within zone X. So it's out of the 100 year floodplain. Uh, and lastly, we analyzed the, the drainage pathways for the existing lot and included in the original submission to you guys uh, is a an existing conditions drainage area map that outlines where uh, stormwater runoff will flow to. Uh, two thirds of the parcel as a whole, the 12.7 acres, flows overland towards the brook and the wetlands. There is approximately one third of the parcel or a little less than one third uh, immediately along the Raffia Road area will sheet flow over the the grasslands towards Raffia Road and be collected in the street drainage system. And then there's a very small portion of the property immediately adjacent to Post Office Road uh, that sheet flows into Post Office Road. And it's really the first like 20, 30 feet of the property where there's a steep slope heading up into the site and then there's the level plateau. Uh, and moving forward to existing conditions, um, I can f quickly flip to the, s the proposed subdivision plan and then run through some of the specs on that. Uh, Everyone has their bearings, and I know the area pretty well. Yes. So everybody has their bearings here. To the left is north. Correct. To yes, this plan right. located. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can... That's east. Yes. Uh, yeah, so the view on this uh, plan rotated a little bit. So we have the north arrow up here for reference. So yep. north is yep. diagonally up. Raffia Road is yep. now down towards the bottom of the sheet and Post Office Road along this corner. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so the existing parcel to remain is a, kind of like a, a C-shaped lot, if you will. Um, it's got a, approximately 300 feet of frontage on Post Office Road, contains all of the wetland resource areas and pretty much all of the escarpment soils. And then there is a portion with frontage along Raffia Road as well, approximately 100, just shy of 133 feet of frontage on Raffia Road. Uh, the total acreage is 10.29, uh, and that existing parcel to remain contains the, uh, the open space located up here in the very northern corner. Uh, as I mentioned, all of the wetland resource areas are maintained on the, the existing parcel. Uh, in fact, the proposed lot is, I, I think the total was like 130 feet away approximately from the wetland resource areas. So 
that proposed parcel is outside of even the upland review area. Uh, just about all of the escarpment soils are located on, or the escarpment slopes are located on the existing parcel as well. There's just a very tiny bit right in the top corner, um, but it's 99% or more of those escarpment areas are located on the existing parcel. Uh, as far as uh, zoning compliance, we do have a, a zoning summary chart on the sheet. Uh, pretty much demonstrates both lots, the existing parcel to remain and the proposed lot are in full compliance with the regulations in regards to frontage, setbacks, uh, lot area, uh, things of that nature. And um, you know, we did verify the, set, the building setbacks for the existing to remain lot. The proposed lot currently doesn't have any uh, structures on it. So those are all listed as not applicable in the zoning chart. We did also uh, verify drainage pathways, and uh, since there's no proposed improvements on this, the existing drainage pathways will remain, but we did include, uh, based on staff comments during our ART meeting for potential development on this lot, we did prepare a, a drainage area map for a typical, develop typical commercial development on a lot of this size, demonstrating how uh, drainage can be designed so that the pathways will be maintained, uh, verifying that we don't need to increase runoff either towards the wetlands or towards the street. Uh, so that's included in, in the original submission. Uh, and now pivoting towards the proposed parcel, the area is a little over 2.3 acres. I think the exact is 2.376. Uh, uh, it's got frontage on Raffia Road uh, approximately a hundred, uh, what was that? There's, I think it was like 200 feet or so, a little over 200 feet of frontage on Raffia Road. Uh, it is more than a hundred feet outside of the wetlands. Uh, so we are completely outside of the upland review area for that proposed parcel. Uh, the escarpment areas are just about non-existent on the parcel. There's just a very tiny bit on, on the back side of this little knoll uh, here in the, the very, what is a northeastern corner of the proposed parcel. Uh, the zoning requirements for this parcel are all, are all met as well in regards to lot area and frontage. Um, the setbacks, building information and impervious coverage are all uh, not applicable at this time. So there's no uh, no existing structures or improvements. Uh, and again, the drainage pathways under condition, the proposed subdivision won't have any impacts. Proposed development can all be met. There's adequate means of meeting or reducing the, uh, the peak discharge rates to both design points being the brook uh, in the back or to Raffia Road. And that is, uh, that's a quick summary on uh, the kind of lowdown on the, the property and some of the specifications. So with that, uh, I think we were going to move into um, staff comments. Okay. Okay, do you, all right. So what we're, uh, Pulling out now, we have a uh, comment response letter uh, that was prepared to, to respond to some of the staff comments we received a few days ago. And then we also have uh, a full revised uh, set of plans that shows the alternative to consider for the open space. So uh, first, as uh, as Lori is passing those out, um, 
I would like to clarify, based on some comments that we got from the wetlands process, uh, we did include a cover page on this plan set. There is also the first page in the plan set is, uh, contains the approval letter from Inland Wetlands, and it also has some uh, the uh, Town of Enfield general notes that are applicable. Uh, so those are the first two sheets. And then the other sheets should be um, the same subject matter that was in the original submission, the, uh, the Alta survey, the two subdivision uh, plan sheets, and the proposed drainage area maps. Um, would you like to go through the comments and you want me to flip the no, sheet or? The okay. Okay. So. Again, but does staff have a chance to see this prior to tonight? Uh, we submitted electronically okay. yesterday, and they requested that we withhold submitting the paper copies until tonight, okay. so there was no confusion or mix yeah, up. No problem. Thank you. Yep. All right, so I'm just going to step over and flip to the, the revised plan over here. So just uh, quickly for orientation purposes, this follows the same orientation as the, the last plan sheet we were looking at with north pointing diagonally to the top left. Uh, Raffia Road is along the bottom with Post Office Road over here on the, uh, the bottom right of the plan sheet. Um, and I'll flip through some of the comments now. So the first comment we received was in regards to uh, section 3E1C from the subdivision regulations, specifically in regards to the open space. Uh, and the comment reads, uh, per section 3E1C, at least 33% of the open space must be free of wetlands, water bodies, existing or proposed stormwater detention facilities, 100 year floodplain or slopes over 25%. The open space restriction area offered, and uh, I would like to clarify that was the original submission, uh, not the plan shown here. Uh, uh, the area was offered as 1.436 acres. The minimum 10% is 1.27. Of the 1.436, perhaps 11,000 square feet meets these criteria of the 62,552 square feet of open space. The minimum area that must meet the criteria is 20,642 square feet. Most of the open space offered includes 40% slopes uh, as the escarpment areas and inland wetlands. Uh, in response to this comment, we have prepare, uh, prepared the alternative uh, shown on the plan uh, up on the board, uh, we did revise the open space on this alternative to be the area uh, I'm highlighting in magenta. Now, the, the, the driver behind this was to clear the escarpment soils that kind of wrap this, uh, the wetland area and the, um, this very northern corner of the property that's kind of the immediate up gradient area discharging to the wetlands. In revising in this manner, it, um, excuse me, it cleared us from most of the escarpment areas and entirely free of the wetlands. So the revised numbers on that, we have 1.431 acres and approximately 67% free of wetlands. Uh, so well in excess of the, re the requirement of at least 33% free of wetlands. Or, or, escarpment. or escarpment, correct, thank you. Um, so, I th so I would just like to note that this is an alternative that we would be happy to make should you wish it. The original subdivision did say that the area that was shown um, would be applicable for any other divisions of this property going forward. But that said, perhaps it wasn't the best choice when they originally approved it, and we'd be willing to adjust to um, respond to the comments about uh, 
the topographic condition of the area of open space. But the end result is still the same. This will be an area that's dedicated to remain undisturbed. Uh, it'll be open space and a conservation restriction. You know, one of the goals by state statute of such a restriction is to just protect and preserve open space. So we can satisfy that, and we could put to bed the issue of that unmet situation with the original subdivision. And, and, if I, and if I can, just to jump the gun just a little, if you don't mind, you can skip ahead just a little bit. Your new proposal actually is adjacent to the actual town-owned uh, John F. Kennedy Middle School. So it's it actually running is. abutting to that property. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Thank you. Yes, and uh, just to clarify on that, a portion of the original proposal abutted the middle school. This uh, alternative has a much larger stretch that is abutting yep. the middle school. Yep. Thank you. Um, Comment number two. Uh, and I say that's why I meant I jumped the gun, so I apologize. Okay. Yeah. Yep, no problem. <laughs> uh, yep, so this is uh, in regards to the uh, excess, the um, section one of the open space requirements require that open space be conveniently accessible to all lots from public ways within a minimum 40 feet of frontage. Um, and we have. Uh, through the original proposal, there was a portion of the open space that was accessible from the middle school. Um, I can get you the exact uh, distance if you would uh, like to see that. On this alternative, the entire northern edge of the open space is directly abutting the, the middle school property. Uh, Comment number three, uh, staff is of the general opinion that the location of this restriction area, its physical characteristics, lack of access, current regulatory status, failure to comply with the above reference standards and the method chosen for its protection, all render the offer of little public value as open space. Um, and we reviewed through the subdivision regulations with regards to open space and uh, the uh, specifically, the, the revised option does comply with all of the regulations, including the ratios of wetlands and escarpment areas. Uh, the access is readily available from the middle school property directly to the north. Uh, the location of the open space was carefully selected in this northern corner to protect the uh, the escarpment areas and the highly uh, erosive soils as outlined by the town engineer in our ART meeting for the proposed development. Um, and again, the open space uh, through this alternative is in the same general location of the lot as the original open space from the 2005 subdivision. Uh, the intent is to maintain the, the sensitive areas in this northern corner along the along the brook and the wetlands. Uh, we feel whether the original option is is selected or this alternative, the the same general intent is there to provide that open space and also protect some of the most sensitive areas on the site. And if I may just add something here. So we did submit a, a draft, well, it wasn't a draft, it's been executed, but held in escrow, a conservation restriction um, by the owner. <clears throat> and I should add that the owner of the property is here this evening um, and is fully um, uh, in agreement with changing the location of the open space because it, of course, affects the remaining lot, which he will continue, they will continue to own. Um, the conservation restriction can be revised. I don't know if this is something that, um, you know, the town would like to see a provision in there for access from the school site. Uh, we could certainly add that, or it could be changed later should the town ever want to be able to allow, um, you know, school children to take paths through the woods and look at um, spring flora or something. I mean, that's certainly possible. Or it can just stay as it is, which is, a restriction that protects and keeps in place of the natural conditions of the land as open space. Um, so I would suggest, because 
We didn't come across, we, we were unaware of this concern. Um, you know, we're, we're dealing with it quickly, but we um, would be delighted if you could see to approve it with the condition that we just revise the conservation restriction to reflect the alternative area and we could work with staff to uh, include any conditions that they would like to see written into the uh, conservation restriction itself. Um, but we are ready to do that and uh, would be happy to do so if you could approve this resubdivision. So turning it back to the technical aspects. Uh, I would like to uh, close on this thought, uh, just discussing the means of protection. Um, as uh, Robin mentioned earlier, uh, we did visit town council to convey the original open space from the 2005 subdivision. They elected not to accept the conveyance, uh, which that after that we pivoted towards the conservation restriction with uh, consultation with uh, planning department staff. And in fact, we utilized uh, some sample or templates, if you will, of other conservation restrictions the town has accepted uh, previously as guidance in preparation of our uh, conservation restriction that is uh, included in the packet. Well, just and to held clarify, I'm not sure if the town of Enfield has done it, but other towns have used those templates. So yeah. we did borrow from those as uh, when we drafted this one for your consideration. Technical. Uh, yes, I think we're on to comment number four now. Uh, the lots have access to most utilities. However, the location of water line and service laterals are not shown. The applicant has taken the approach that improvements will be deferred to a future date upon lot development and that no lot improvements will be done as a part of this resubdivision. In general, the applicants have focused on the lot fronting on Raffia Road, as this is the only, uh, this is the lot they intend to develop. However, that this application is for a resubdivision, attention to the larger lot cannot be avoided. The larger lot fronting on Post Office Road currently has a use, is developed, but the compliance status of this use is presently in question. It is unclear how this use is served, uh, specifically mentioning water and sewer. Um, so first off, I would uh, like to clarify, in the original submission, we prepared a, a narrative that does detail uh, most of the utilities available and uh, discusses specifically Raffia Road and Post Office Road. Um, in the revised uh, set of plans included both the, the revised Alta survey and the subdivision plans, we did add in utilities. Um, the water line was the, the big missing item. Uh, we have since rec uh, obtained record information from Hazardville Water to confirm that there is a 10 inch water main in Raffia Road. It does not extend up this portion of Post Office Road. So the frontage along Post Office Road does not have water. Uh, we also obtained record drawings for sewer uh, and confirmed there is no sewer along this small section of Post Office Road. Um, Sorry. Uh, continuing on Post Office Road, there is. Um, oh. I'm seeing some. That's odd. I'm, I'm just commenting to myself. That's that's odd. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it's actually um, we confirmed with both the record plans for water and sewer. It's a small little section of Post Office Road from the intersection with Raffia up to uh, I forget the name of the street. The next little street that comes up like a quarter mile away, that's where the water and sewer goes down. So it's a small little section of like, not even a thousand feet of street that doesn't have water or sewer. So the water and sewer going down the street, that's right before the church. Correct. Yep. Yes. Well, that's, thank you. <laughs> There's something it, new tonight. It seemed odd to us too. We had to do some digging to uncover the, the record drawings and the reasoning behind that. Yeah, well, thank you. Uh, uh, continuing on Post Office Road for a minute, uh, there is overhead electric and telecommunications. It's actually on both sides of the street because it crosses the street along the frontage here. Um, and we did not see any evidence of gas along this small section of Post Office Road. Again, we suspect a similar uh, configuration to the water and sewer. Uh, 
the Raffia Road frontage has access to all utilities. The electric and telecommunications is overhead on the near side of the street. Water is on the far side of the street. <laughs> the gas is approximately under the sidewalk on the near side of the street. And then the sewer is along the far side of the street, but when the sewer was established through this neighborhood, they installed stubs every, I believe it was every 100 feet. Uh, we do show the stub locations on the, the survey plan, and there are two stubs, I believe it is, that extend into the proposed parcel, and there is one stub that extends into the portion of the existing lot to remain along Raffia Road. So. Uh, given the location of all the utilities, the existing lot to remain does have full access to all utilities uh, available. Okay. Um, okay, moving on to comment number five with regards to stormwater. <clears throat> During preliminary design review, it was established that site stormwater must convey to the system on Post Office Road. No easements have been retained or proposed across Lot 2 to allow any other option. Uh, and I would like to clarify, I believe uh, from the staff comments, Lot 2 is referring to the existing lot to remain. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, we did do a full uh, drainage analysis, both uh, for existing conditions and a proposed future development typical of a business use of a similar size lot. And that drainage map was specifically to confirm drainage pathways uh, can be maintained. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, approximately the back quarter of the proposed lot uh, looking towards the north. That portion uh, will drain towards the, the wetlands and the water course. The front two thirds to three quarters will sheet flow out towards Raffia Road. Uh, under future development, we are bound by the, um, the state drainage manual and a town uh, engineering review to match or reduce uh, stormwater runoff. And uh, we're currently in design or wrapping up design and I can verify as a part of our proposed design, the peak discharge rates will be matched or reduced both towards the rear, uh, towards the wetlands and towards Raffia Road uh, and specifically with regards to the, the water flowing towards the wetlands in the rear, that area is going to remain sheet flow. So it's going to remain uh, matching the existing, both the existing flow rates and flow pathways and patterns. Uh, since it is not going to be channelized or, uh, or focused in any manner, uh, we feel that it does not warrant a need for an easement as it is substantially matching existing conditions. Uh, any stormwater discharge out towards Raffia Road, we have uh, plenty of frontage through which to have a controlled stormwater discharge through our frontage and out into, into the, the street drainage system. So no easement should be needed to connect or discharge stormwater towards the street. I might add that if during, and we don't think there's any possibility that's going to be the case, but during site plan review of the development of lot one, should there be a change for some reason in what uh, Tim has just advised you of, uh, we could certainly provide a necessary easement at that point because it would be necessary as part of your site plan review. But we're just telling you it's not we've done enough study at this point to know that's not going to be the case so to just throw an easement out there without having any reason to say it's needed is sort of a waste if you will so you can catch us if there was something that needs to be done at the time of site plan review <coughs> 
Comment number six. In the present case, for instance, the design leaves only 132.82 feet of lot two frontage on Raffia Road before the frontage of the Vela Properties lot begins. The minimum frontage in the BL lot, uh, BL zone is 150 feet. Uh, with the revisions to lot two uh, as proposed, the lot, although it does only have 132 feet of frontage on Raffia Road, it contains just under 300 feet of frontage on Post Office Road. Uh, it, therefore, it meets the frontage requirements of the subdivision and zoning regulations. Um, and at this time, uh, there's no known plans for the, uh, the balance of lot two. If any future plans come up for either development or future subdivision or resubdivision that, you know, would come back before, before you all for future consideration. Comment seven, there are slope rights along the post office road frontage in favor of the state, as well as escarpment slopes in the southeast corner of the larger lot. These may impact future design options. Um, again, with this, there are no future uh, plans at this time for lot two. Um, so anything, any development there will be you know, pure speculation at this time. Uh, but I also would like to add, we reviewed the slope rights and the slope rights do not prohibit or in any way prevent the addition or uh, shaping of driveway or access to that lot through the, through the area defined as sloped rights. That are held by the uh, state. Uh, yes, correct, held by the state. <clears throat> and indeed, there's a driveway there now. Yes, there is. Uh, it has a paved apron, and then it's a um, it's a dirt driveway from the property line in. Uh, comment number eight: Due to the scale of lot two and its development potential <clears throat> under current BL zoning, it may be prudent to consider establishing reciprocal easements at property lines for interlot access and or utility connections. Uh, Currently, this uh, proposed uh, application for resubdivision uh, in front of you today is just for the resubdivision, does not include any proposed physical alterations to this land. Um, given that there are no known plans, no future plans at this time for the development of Lot 2, it's unknown what their needs may be for access or utilities. That being said, there is that 132, 133 feet of frontage on Raffia Road as means of access to all of the utilities and uh, egress and ingress to the site for vehicular and, and pedestrian traffic. Uh, in addition to the remainder of the frontage along Post Office Road with select utilities and full access for, for um, ingress and egress. Um, so just quickly summarizing, all the utilities are available in Raffia Road with uh, sewer specifically being stubbed onto the property. The only utility that would potentially have to cross the street for would be water. Uh, Post Office Road has the electric telecommunications. Um, and since all of the utilities are readily available and access is readily available, um, uh, in conjunction with the, uh, the lot area and uh, frontage requirements, uh, it's pretty clear to us that the proposed lot two with regard to utilities and access is compliant with the uh, Enfield zoning regulations and subdivision regulations. Uh, and final comment number nine, uh, the subdivision plan should show at least, uh, should at least show lot access, the proposed, uh, the location of the potable water supply and septic sewer lines or systems on the larger lot, as well as power, gas, uh, if any, and or other utilities. Um, 
we did revise the uh, the plans uh, that we submitted to you uh, tonight to show the mains in the street. Uh, so it added specifically the water main. Uh, we did look for other utilities and it's questionable what utilities that existing building has. We saw no evidence of a water service or a sewer service to the building. Uh, there's, there does appear to be electric um, and no gas to that existing building. We did also revise the plan to show the, um, the location of the dirt driveway to that existing uh, barn building. Over that, that's the uh, that's our response to staff comments. I think we've provided everything staff has requested of us. Um, whatever issues there might be with the existing building are irrelevant in terms of whether or not the remaining lot two will conform to your subdivision and zoning standards, which it does. So we think we're in a good place to be able to ask you. Uh, oh, we do have one comment, the engineering comment. Oh, yes, the engineer that comment came, came in, in today, yes. Um, do you have that I do. comment? Okay, I'll get to print that one ahead. So we did get a comment um, today from the town engineer, and it related to whether or not there should be a uh, a, uh, I think it was in regards to the, the sidewalk. sidewalk, yes. There it is. I'm sorry. So it was very short and succinct. It came in today. It said, uh, oh, this is it. Yes. Portland concrete sidewalks meeting town subdivision standards should be installed on the Raffia Road frontage. A detailed cross-section should be added to the plans. Now that surprised us a little bit. We did go to the zoning regs, and the zoning regulations say that's a requirement for residentially zoned land when you're pursuing a subdivision, which this is not. So we, we haven't had a chance to talk to the engineer, but uh, that's our immediate response to that. And you know, I don't know if you've had any other communications with the applicant at all on it, but no. it's not a requirement for a commercially zoned piece of property. So if you go to the zoning regs, I'm sorry, subdivision regs, which I do have here. We make a, oh, we can't make a minute. It says on page 24, section Section F, Portland cement concrete sidewalks at least five feet in width shall be placed six inches off the front property line across proposed lots in residentially zoned areas and shall be constructed in, in, specific, in compliance with specific standards. And then it does go on to provide um, the ability of the commission to, uh, to waive that under certain circumstances, but the point is, the basic point is, it only applies to commercially zoned, pro uh, residentially zoned properties. So I don't know um, where that leaves us. Uh, uh, because would it's, you? It's by two minutes now, which really, I wouldn't want to have in front of the building anyway, because you can't rely on every two minutes, by two minutes, it's kind of rough. So we would be putting concrete in front of the property anyway. Okay. That is our intended developer of the new lot and his comment was that he would certainly be willing to put concrete sidewalks along the lot, the new lot. Correct. Well, yeah, just a new lot. Yes. Just a new lot. Correct. Correct. Thank you. <laughs> Can I open it up? Something you could deal with at site plan review. Yes. yes. Sure. Can I open it up for some questions? Absolutely. Are you all set we for now? Set. I'm sure there'll be some more. Okay. Questions from the commission? Questions from the commission. I had I had questions, but I think I think I think you you kind of answered, especially with your yep. alternative proposal for the open space. Yes. Um, really, is given it will give us something um, 
to, to think about, because um, I think that alternative answered some of the questions that came up uh, through staff, et cetera, et cetera. I had a question to staff. And give me a second how I want to phrase this, and I don't want to step in it. Um, no, thanks. <laughs> um, with your new proposal for open space, could we do we could we waive the uh, conservation restriction and just claim it as open space, or would we want to have the conservation? Help me out with that process, if you yeah, may. Yeah, sure. Um, first off. Thank you very much for the for this middle for the response the detailed response. I did not have a chance to review it in advance of the meeting, so I'm seeing it for the first time tonight. Um, but I'll kind of preface the answer with really a, a question. I, I think probably direct to the applicant, and, and this is I hope simple: is is the commission bound by the 2005 subdivision approval with respect to? the manner in which the open space is dealt with in this resubdivision application. In, in my legal opinion, no, because we're back before you. We can change the plan, and I would see no reason why, if that's a preferred alternative, we can't do it. So, Okay, so absolutely. Le leading, leading from that is if that's – if that's the truth relative to the alternative you presented, does it in any way um, kind of prohibit the commission from considering other alternatives? Should they should they want to? If they want to, I'm not saying that they want to, but if they want to, so it's really just a setting the stage for them so that they understand what their rights and prerogatives <laughs> are vis-a-vis -vis the open space question. And I'm not suggesting at all, by any means, that. It be located somewhere else. That there be other some some other kind of treatment. That it not be a conservation restriction. Anything at all. I just want them to understand uh, what their what their rights and prerogatives are in that regard. I would probably. I might even take a different tact if you were proposing to come up with something that was very different. That you know was a conservation restriction that precluded development of lot two, which would be you know if you were to put it. Anywhere else, that's really what would happen. I would think that that would be inappropriate to do. Um, but taking, I certainly believe that you could change the location of that open space that was previously approved in a manner that doesn't change the fact that you would still, you know, have two lots. So I, I, I can go that far. Okay, thank you. And I would hope also that you're not inclined to try and think of more inventive places to try and find open space, given that this seems to be a logical solution to address the concerns that were raised by staff. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your opinion. Just another quick question is, in your response, one of your responses, you mentioned that you received the template from the planning department. Do you know who who provided that to, to you? Because I don't recall. I certainly didn't. No, you didn't. But Laurie Whitman and I had some back and forth about what we might do after the town council said, thank you very much, but we don't want this property. Okay. So we talked about all their alternatives, and we chatted about the possibility of doing a conservation restriction in lieu of deeding it over to the town. And uh, she gave us some models, and we had some models, and that's when we came up with what we did in, in, and has been signed already. So, okay. That's okay? Yes, that is correct. So, so, so. Now, my, my question about where the open space is is um, originally, and I believe this is, was the case, is the town has a drainage uh, operation. I, don't, I can't say an easement. Um, but we have some drainage structures, and will this include that area? Um, I have a suggestion for that, because I know it's something you would like to get cleaned up also. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is a, an easement document that has been recorded that gives the town a right to drain through um, part of the area. Would you, can you show where sure. that is? Yeah. And there was an issue because... Um, yeah. Yep. Point made the mic. Yeah. You, you, need to, 
You need a mic. Need oh, mic. okay. Just in case anyone's listening. <laughs> There's a drainage uh, low point that's just off the property line to the rear and going down towards uh, towards the brook. So the the drainage easement, although I think uh, Robin's getting to this, we there, the easement was written and recorded. Referenced a map that was never provided. Correct. Right. So. Right. The area we feel is in question is pretty much along this the northern property line as a whole. And I would just say, if we can move this along and be able to get the, uh, you know, our, our our approval, hopefully tonight, that we would provide and work with the staff. I know uh, uh, Ms. Witten thought she was going to have the engineer maybe map out where that easement is or however you want to do it. But we would, of course you know, work with them to get the map and get it recorded on the land record so that can be taken care of. Okay, I don't think it needs to be a condition attendant to the approval of this, but I'm committing to you that we would be willing to get that done for the town also. That is another issue, especially with the town engineers, a high priority and we want to make sure we're covered. Sure. Let me, right. uh, get, let me just take a two second break here. You don't have to get up. Okay. So, but let me, uh, let me do my thing before. Is there anyone here who would like to speak for or against this application? Is there anyone here who'd like to speak for or against this application? Final time, seeing none, we took care of that little piece of the open hearing. Thank you. Um, open it back up for questions to the applicant. Commissioner Higley. I don't have a question. I just want to thank you for agreeing to the sidewalks. That's a highly walkable neighborhood with the school and the apartments, and you have made it, you've beautified the area with a new sidewalk. So thank you. I, I would like to make a suggestion. I know this is probably not what you're going to want to hear, but I'm going to be quite honest with you because I, I try to always want to be as honest as I can. I, I think we have a lot of new material here tonight that I think staff also needs to review. We don't have a motion to accept in front of us tonight. Mm -hmm. So I think, I, think, I think a lot of us are intrigued, especially with your new proposal, and I, I do want to personally thank you for that. Yes. Um, so I would propose at this point that we table this to the next meeting so that you guys get back with staff to formulate something so we have a motion and, and curb and you know dot all the I's and the T's and we'll be prepared to probably vote on this next meeting. Uh, I, timing is a critical I, issue for I us I totally right understand, now. but you have to understand staff. When, I know. When did you get some of this, Matt, yesterday? If not at all. You just got some of this tonight. We just received your alternative yeah, proposal received, tonight. We received the response and received revised plans yeah. yesterday so yesterday. I, I didn't have time to review those before yeah so we're, we're, we're when's I, the next meeting please J june 8th yes june 8th, june 8th. okay yeah, you yeah, want please. to identify yourself for the yeah, record? please come forward gary Euclidal, torrington connecticut that, that's fine okay uh, i think mr petronel is a builder um i may have actually worked for him one, one time or another years ago um it's just winter's coming for us yep. and uh June 8th is fine. As yeah, we, we understand. Yeah, we understand that the, the timeline, the building schedule. Thank you. But we just need things that, you know, dot all the I's, cross all the T's, and get ready for the next meeting. So I would propose seeing no questions. I would yeah. entertain a motion to uh, keep this public hearing open, but table this until the next meeting. Is there a motion? So made? moved. Motion made by Vice Chairman Higley, seconded by okay. Vice Chairman DeGray to uh, keep this public hearing open and table it to the June 8th meeting that starts at 7 o'clock. Thank you all very much. All those in favor? Yeah. Anybody saying aye? Aye. The show was unanimous at the table. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
at uh, 9.15. Thank you very much. We're going to move on now to, um, as I mentioned before, new business. The applicant has asked for it to keep that on the table. They're not ready for FLD 45 yet. Hopefully, hopefully next meeting. Let's see if Matt's putting his thumb up or not. <laughs> who knows? <laughs> yeah, who knows? All right, then we'll move on to other business. So we'll move on now to discuss state mandated affordable housing plan. Yes, Mr. You Chairman and Commission. So here we are. We're at the end. <laughs> so um, as previously discussed numerous times, we have um, agreed that our affordable and fair housing plan, which is mandated by the state, will be Chapter 5 of our POCD, which will come into effect on May 30th. And the appendix will be the 2023 POCD housing and housing needs study that was prepared by Goldman in New York back, I think, in 21. I forget what the date was. Um, yeah, June 9th, 2021. So um, you've had this before, before you, um, you know, as we've gone through, Chapter 5 pretty much has changed a little bit, but. You all know what it was. You have the final POCD. I took the this actual um, copy from the POCD, and uh, that's what it will be. I did not copy the 22 pages of the statistics and the report. So um, if, if you're happy with it, great. If you want to talk about it and propose changes, that, that's also a possibility. Um, my proposal is whatever happens tonight. I would I would hope that we could um, reach a motion with an with hopefully an approval, and we'll make the modifications and put them bef um, in with the POCD on May 30th. Thank you. you. Heard from staff. Is there any discussion? Again, just to sum it up, but basically, Lori's taking his basic our housing chapter out. We're going to make a couple of heading changes because it's going to go to OPM correctly. Correct, it goes to OPM. Yeah, OPM, yeah. Um, there yeah. is a motion here to approve this and allow her to do that, her and staff to do all that. Is there anyone who wants to discuss anything in particular about the housing? Is everyone, does everyone feel? I just want to make a comment. Be, please, Commissioner Holinsky, be, be my guest. Yeah, I just, just want to say, I, I did go back and I reviewed the minutes from that night and all the things we approved. It looks like everything is in there. Yeah. So we're good. Thank you. Is that, is that how everybody else feels too at this point? Yep. Good. Okay. Uh, Mr. Just, just, I think, a, a clerical error with the second bullet point of the strategy. B, uh, allow multifamily housing in the BR, yeah. BP, and uh, it should be BL. Yeah, we are. Yeah. I, I, I think I, I also caught that, and, and we'll make the uh, typo errors go away. Yeah. And we're going to be doing the, the same with the, POC, with the POCD as best we can before Tuesday. Yeah, I went through the POCD to really, as I said before, I stopped, did stop at the office. I did notice a couple, but I was almost like, I'm not going to, yeah, there's not that many. Really, there yeah. isn't. Yeah, there's not that many, no. So seeing none, um, Mr. Secretary, if you don't mind, uh, there's a, right down there is there is a motion to approve. Yep. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve the Enfield Affordable and Fair Housing Plan as required under CGS 8-30J. Second. Motion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. thought there was more to it. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> well, well, there are reasons for approval. And oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have to state the reasons for approval for the record? Or? I, I, I think that would Should be. Should we do it now or after the vote? After the vote? Yeah. Yeah, after the vote. So there's a motion made by the secretary, uh, Commissioner Petronella, and seconded by Vice Chairman Higley to approve the uh, housing plan. Um, any discussion on the motion? Nope. Seeing none, Mr. Secretary, roll call whenever you're ready. Uh, Lou Fiore? A uh, four. Linda DeGray? Four. Virginia Higley? Four. Francis Alimo? Four. Kieran Majwudar? Four. Kenneth Helensky? Four. And John Petronella is four. The record show is unanimous approval, and the reason for approval of this plan meets the requirements of CGS 8-30J by promoting affordable and fair housing in the Enfield community. This plan was specifically discussed during the update of the Enfield Plan of Conservation Development for 2023 and helps to meet the strategy for improvement by promoting diverse and equitable housing in the community of Enfield. So well done, everybody. Thank you. That's another milestone. Could, so. could you also please state the effective date? 
should effective date should be today? Or? Uh, no, May 30th. Uh, May 30th. May 30th. Oh, I'm sorry. Effective date, May 30th, 2023. Sorry. Thank you. Didn't see that. Again, thank you. Thank you, everybody, Commission. That yep. POCD is done and the affordable plan is done. It was a lot of effort by many, many people yeah. over a long period of time, yeah. including the staff having worked so hard to put it together and keep mowing it. Yeah. Yes, it was. Now we'll move on to the next item. I left this on the agenda only because I wasn't quite sure of what you guys wanted to do, which, which really doesn't matter. So, you know, lack of confusion. Um, do we want to talk more about this or, or do we want to wait until we do um, the, you know, the, reg, the regu regulation uh, zoning regs? It should be added to the zoning yeah, regs. Yeah, so I'm just looking around again because I, I, I kind of lost regs. my notes. Right, zone. Zoning regs, zoning regs, zoning regs, zoning regs, zoning regs. Yep. Zoning regs. Right. Yep. So I'm, um, we don't need to have a motion or anything. We are going to discuss the vape smoke shop issues when we update the voting, uh, the, uh, voting regs. <laughs> so that's my other hat. Sorry, everybody. The uh, <laughs> zoning regs. Uh, so we can remove this from the agenda. We'll put that on the other list to do. And I want to thank you all for at least um, reading through this information. And we'll tackle that when we get to that. So. Thank you. We can remove that from other business. We move on. Enforcement reports. None this I evening. I just want to go back for a second. That now that the POCD is over, the zoning review, re reformatting the whole thing. When do we start? I'll tell you when I have my report. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's got a report in, on In it. a couple right. items down. <laughs> she has a report on it. Okay. Enforcement reports? No. None at this time. I would, I, I, you know, I am going to bring up something on enforcement only because I just feel it needs to be mentioned, even though it, it doesn't at this point have anything to do with this particular board. Um, but I do want to mention that, um, as you know, the Zoning Board of Appeals did upheal the cease and desist in Jimmy's Pub. Um, that was, they did up, upheld that. Mm. But since that, the owner has now appealed to the courts. Um, and basically, when he appeals to the courts, there's a stay. So uh, basically, things are remaining as is until the court case and hearing. That could take six months, one year, year and a half. So we, I think, you know, I'm only mentioning it because I know people do watch this, is that this outside planning is only control. It's even outside the ZBA's control now. It's in the hands of the courts. Mm -hmm. Outside PZC. Yeah, outside, of, uh, it, you know, it's in the hands of the courts. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, any correspondence? Just a reminder about next Thursday's um, training session yep. here, 7 o'clock. Yeah, I hope everybody can if, make it. If you are making it, please make sure that you've just let everybody know. Let myself or Sue Roche or Jen know. Okay. Is anybody not going? Yeah. Is anyone not going? There you go. <laughs> We're all going. <laughs> Director of Planning Report, you're on. Okay. So um, we were going to try to, we've been trying to. I did. I did say that. Yeah, I, did, I did mention it. Oh, I'm sorry. You all set? Do you have you, something? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. He did have something for commissioner's okay, correspondence. That's fine. Yeah, go ahead. Um, commission, on, um, two recent approvals um, on Elm Street, the um, cannabis retailer and uh, the fast food chicken outlet, they're, they're, they're becoming a little blighted. They're overgrown. Nobody's touched them. I don't know what's going on with them. They don't look very good. Maybe we can get Rick out there or send somebody something. Uh, that would be blight. Blight. It's, it looks blighted, and I would think if it was a resident, we would be enforcing it. Um, it's right on our mayor maiden throughway there, and um, it should be addressed. Um, raising canes in the old raising area. canes in the yeah. The other thing on um, you just mentioned um, land, like bonds on landscape bonds. Do we um, have authority over with the bond where they place bollards in and within the landscape? I'm sorry. It's part of your site plan. I mean, like bo the placement, placement of bollards of is part of the site plan approval. Yeah, it's not a bonding. Okay, it's not, a bond doesn't cover it at all. No, not typically, no. no. That's usually sedimentation and erosion and landscaping. Now, I was looking at the bollards. Um, I'm, not, I'm sure they didn't get their landscape bond yet back on the new car wash uh, 
on Elm Street as well. To put bollards around a big transformer. But coming westbound, where a car would hit it, there's no bollards. <laughs> <laughs> it's not protected from the flow of traffic that would actually hit the thing. Yeah. You know, I know the cabinet doors open up on that side, but maybe some bollards, you know, a little further east of it. Do you think she'll any You know, I don't remember. Uh, going back, um, I mean, it was they were, they were running on generator power when they first opened, so I don't know how the CO even got ish. I mean, I don't know how they did it in stages or in phases or whatever they did, but they put this huge transformer on the side of the road, and if you're coming west, there's nothing protecting it. So I don't know if that's something we want to just for uh, we can look at it, if we have any authority so as a safety precaution. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Cool. Okay, so um, yes, our next steps are working on the zoning regulations. We actually did make quite a bit of progress, although it's been years, literally. Um, so um, our next steps is trying to, we're trying to set up a, a meeting with the chairman, Matt and I, and the, the consultant. We need to like readdress the actual contract and figure out where, we, where we've actually gotten to and then what the next steps are. So we should be trying to meet probably the next, well, this next week is out, but um, the following week is also out because I will be away for a week. And then so probably in the next three weeks, we'll be able to sit down and have a good conversation. We're trying to meet possibly next Monday, but I haven't heard yet. So not this Monday, but a week from Monday, because I'll be there. I'll be here that day, but not for the rest of the week. So we're just trying to. The only other time was just coming Wednesday morning, and that was it. Yeah. So and yeah. So just between things happening with all of all the different. Yeah parties we're having a hard time finding a good time to meet so but we are we are trying we're not we're not yeah we're not pushing it's, it. it's, it's just absolutely in the works and yep. we're reviewing things and just a moving forward just a question um, yeah. is there you said the contract is not going to be like a delay are you, are you talking about don poland yeah. It, 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 yeah. was it the same uh, as oh, the no. yeah it's the same contract oh, okay just, we don't I have mean, to go through that again signed the contract okay. years ago it was like we need to oh, just kind no. of re it's just well i know there was a process and right. commissioner Lynn, i think you were no you weren't on it um but so, during well, the last when well, we did the plcd no no i because that would just take up so much time no 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 that's that's we're trying to avoid that no that's not the plan good yeah so um i think that's it for now okay Opportunities unresolved issues. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Administrative approval requests. Any receipt of applications? Yes, we we have three at this point. Um, public hearing 37 ZA, 140 to 148 Hazard Avenue is application to amend section 5.50.1 regarding driveways in the BP zone, Trinity Health of New England, Johnson Memorial Hospital, applicant owner, map 65, lot 90 in the BP zone. <clears throat> and then public hearing 3069 at 9 Manning Road. This is an application to allow a commercial vehicle in the R33 zone. Christopher Lataki, applicant owner, map 34, lot 8, R33 zone, and SBR 1917, 40 Oliver Road, application for outdoor event, Renee Sh Sharoff, I think that's how it's pronounced, applicant Claire Renee Nathan Tamarsi, Sharoff, and Sarah Parlos, owners, map 47, lot 37, I1 zone. Quick question for you before we adjourn. Is it appropriate to ask any questions about these only just because they've been, we have a receipt? Is it appropriate for you to ask about these yes. applications? Yes. Sure. So basically, if I remember correctly, on 140 and 148 Hazard Avenue, that is the um, expansion of the you know, Johnson St. Francis Medical Center. And this is about the truck special road that we asked them to please wait until they are operative before they come back. If I remember correctly, if we want to go back 10 minutes, and they're not really okay. operative, are they? Correct. Okay. And 9 Manning Road, is that the actual 
um, property where a zoning enforcement officer has been involved with trying to remove vehicles off of that property? I believe that is also correct. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I, I knew where I was talking about. Okay. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Ken. On the 140, the 148 has that. Uh, that's yeah, that's the one where the driveway, where the, where the trucks. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, and so you know, I know we got Ajahn on that. Yep. And anyway, uh, I've noticed that I thought as part of the original approval. Of that, I'm sorry, is your mic on? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought as part of our original approval of their site plan that we had said there was no, were no, to be no service vehicles uh, on the road, uh, middle road, no service entrance. I thought they said there should, I thought we said there should be no service entrance on, man, on middle road at the rear of the property, and it looks to me like there is. Okay, there's, there's a driveway there behind the building. And they, and they have been using it. Oh, absolutely. That's how they're getting everything in. I've been watching and going over there. Yeah, that's, but that's I thought, how they're getting I thought as part of our original I don't remember approval, that's, we had stated yeah. we could not do that. There's a restriction, yeah. Right. Yeah. I think, in place to, to not allow that kind of I believe we were permitting room. it, but they were going to move it over a little bit so it wasn't right okay. across the street I'm just, from just somebody. Asking you question. I'll just have to double check. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> But um, with that, with that said, I've been pulling through there a couple of times just to see how it's going, and I think without that in the rear, yeah. it would be bad out front. Yeah. And we, we really got to think about this application coming. Um, with that, I, I think they just want the road for delivery. Uh, yeah, it would be one way in. One way in. Um, but, uh, yeah. It would be a mess out front right now if they weren't coming in through Middle Road, whether they're supposed to or not. There's a lot of material stockpiled back there. I, I thought Middle Road was approved only as a construction entrance yes. temporary. That's what they're yeah. doing. And that's right. exactly what they're doing. That's yeah. what I thought. But we, I think uh, they're using that other side road that we're talking about, future road we're talking, maybe future road. They're using that road a lot, too. Yeah. Um, and if they weren't using that, it would be a real problem yeah, at that probably, intersection. We probably shouldn't be discussing. Yeah, I'm just saying. I've been, I've been, you know, going over there taking a look. But we had enough. No, you know, we beautiful probably, building. Beautiful building. We probably shouldn't be discussing this anymore to the applicants in front of us. Yep. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. We'll move. Motion made by Second. Vice Chairman. <laughs> Higgins, yeah, second by Vice Chairman DeGray to adjourn. Who wants this to lead fast? Meeting is adjourned at uh, 9:31. Uh, Thank you. Good night, everybody. See you on June 8th.